Yo, what's up, everybody? Sick. Welcome back at the show, everybody. Welcome. This Welcome is our to the show. part two of the, what do we call it, the West Coast of the Blade Cup edition? Yeah, the Blade Cup Marathon. The Blade Cup Marathon. <laughs> yes. We're what a weekend. We're continuing again. What a crazy weekend. Oh, my goodness. I do want to talk about the weekend, but I feel like our guest has a, a lot to talk about the weekend also. Yeah, we, we should talk about the weekend with our guest if we want. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. that'd be cool. He, but it was a, lot a crazy of weekend. To regardless, regardless. Yeah. Uh, anybody who wasn't there, yeah. Blading Cup went off. All the clips are online. Stay tuned for the Butter TV edit. Oh, man. That's probably going to be insane. Yeah, he yeah. was there for that. Um, but super hyped, but I don't want to talk too much about yeah, it now. We'll get into that later. Um, we have a lot to talk about today, but we have to get started with our WTF yeah, we have a of the WTF week. Of the week. And our WTF comes to you from, I hope I say this name right, Dabi Diaco. That sounds like a good shot. It's not bad. Do you see this? Oh, yeah. The, the backflip. The huge lofty backflip. Yeah, that is insane. Oh. <laughs> that's the most WTF trick of the week. Yeah, that's, a, that's very WTF worthy. Yeah, that shit was wild. Wow. Insane. Big shout out to, like I said, Diaby Diaco. Nice. I hope I said that right. I think that's good. I think that's good. That sounds like <laughs> a good shot. I hope I said that right. Um, so I guess we have nothing else to talk about except just the weekend. So we just call on our guest. I think we should just bring a guest. We have a very, 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 very special guest. This is podcast royalty right here. This is play, play <laughs> royalty. You know, this is one of the architects. Yes. You know? he, he, set the, he set the blueprints for the DNA of That's skating right. content, what it is today. That's right. He, he laid down the cement for the house. Everyone, please welcome Dave Payne. Thank you, thank you boys. Thank you. Hi. Oh, yeah. It's... It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, it's lovely having Damn, you. Damn, I've been looking forward to this day for so long. <laughs> as long as I have. Yeah. And I mean that with the ultimate. Can you want to angle your mic up a little more? Which way? Like uh, this thing? Mm -hmm. This thing, just twist it and yes, angle sir. it up. You're a little taller yes, than our, our last guest that I should have okay. done. This way? You pull it up. Like, ah, gotcha. Not like this, like this, like this. Oh, like this, 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 this one. Right? Like <laughs> I thought you do this kind of stuff. I do, but not this one. All right, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you. I got, I got, I got. What a start. What a rough start. <laughs> By the way, I did see the WTF, the WTF clip of the week yeah. as well before. Yeah. Full full pencil transfer. Back yeah. Back. That was insane. Turn the mic around. What are you doing? This way? No, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> no one can hear you. I'm messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that was like laid out like Christ. Yes. Like the, the lay. Full commit on that. Yeah. Much full travel. Commit. Yeah. Much and travel. And <laughs> shout out to <laughs> Butter TV, by the way. <laughs> big fan as well. Yeah. Uh, solid music choices always. Always. Man. Yeah, he is really Great good style. with everything. Yeah, they got the East Coast style. Yeah, he brings back that good vibe, you know? He does. Yeah. He does. Damn, it's what a compliment on... His videos from Dave Fain. Oh, he knows. <laughs> you told him before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's hyped about that. Yeah. So what did you think of the weekend, this weekend, Blading Cup? Just like you guys, I think yeah. I'm exhausted yeah. from just seeing so many people. It is the greatest rollerblading reunion of all time, mm -hmm. is what it is. It's and insane. thanks to John Julio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, get, and company and everybody who dedicates their time and effort mm -hmm. to make that event oh, happen yeah. mm -hmm. in the town of Santa Ana. Just, I mean, I'm lucky it's in my backyard now, like last since it started. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's it's an amazing weekend. I just think I just you get overcome with who you're seeing, meet your new friends, old friends, and and people you spend so much time with that you barely ever see, and you get Sasquatch sightings like Aaron Aaron Feinberg <laughs> Sasquatch sightings showing yeah. up out of nowhere. That's total big pulling an Elvis. Did anybody expect that? <laughs> yeah, dude, Tyler Shields. Yeah, yeah. You know, getting Arlo here out of a yeah. sudden. I yeah, mean, I know. Some headlines just to start there, right? It's intense, man. The movie premiere. It was like every, every 20 minutes you'd be like, oh, did you hear like this person's here? This person's here. Tyler Shields here. B Love is here. Like yeah. Arlo's here. Sigourney is here. Yeah. yeah. Ivanos is here. Like what the oh, hell? I didn't see B Love. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, T J yeah. Weber. Yep, I, I didn't know that till yeah. like this morning. He's TJ like Weber a CIA there. agent over there with his beard. And <laughs> yeah, I, was about, I walked right by him and I I see <laughs> TJ. You know, like and I, I see him like pretty frequently and wow. I walked right by him. It looks like he put the full out. disguise yeah. on. Yeah, like the glasses, beard, hat. Like he had the full disguise. Yeah. on. <laughs> I, I I liked something that Billy said earlier that we're before we started the recording. Uh, he's like, I, there's people that I don't even talk to, but I look at with my eyes, and mm. we have like. Hello, just with yeah. that. I'm like that. Yeah, it's so true. Mm. I hugs. I hugs. Yeah. I hugs. Good. There you go. The I, hugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to steal it for yeah. you. I'll leave that one for you. Yeah, thanks, yeah. man. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. I just coined it just just in that moment. It was a spur of the moment thing, man. Mm. Yeah, it was nice. It kind of, kind of sums up the weekend. It's just um, yeah. it's a good feeling. Like you mm. always walk away with such inspiration moving mm. forward with Roll Yeah, mm. so much. Events like that. You know, not not just that event, but you know, yeah, yeah. big events like that. Mm -hmm. Winter Clash. 
in Europe, of course. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And the New York event, Bashi's event. Yeah, 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 that's a big one. Kind of like top three would come to mind, I would think. Yeah, that's yeah. it's a that's that's the biggest one in New York for sure. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Blaney Cup is the biggest one in America. Yeah, totally. anyway. Yeah, that, but the East Coast the always has to have a say and have something. You got to do something. Come on. <laughs> come you're, on. you're an East Coaster. Yes, I am. Yeah, Philadelphia, Philadelphia PA. Mm-hmm. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. It's just back there last month. Same family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We you still missed make you. your way back. Oh yeah, I'm probably back like four times a year on average. Okay. Some a lot more when I was with VG. Then we got to do something, man. When you come through, I know you always through for like two days, three days. Yeah, but I'm never like through New York. No, Philly's not far though. Yeah, we be hanging out with Shooter a lot this summer. Oh, Shooter got the mini ramp now. Yeah, I went yeah. to his house like two, three times this summer. <laughs> I know. I was I hoping to get a session back. in. Yeah, I had to take a. Yeah, the last trip was like strictly had to handle some family business, and I was like, shoot it next time. I'm coming. Back yeah, <laughs> I'm coming back for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still see Mike Rios, Majet, and mm-hmm. I would come home. I always see those guys up, and of yeah. course Sean and Colin and those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a lot to go see. Right? Yeah. And then yeah, man, if I went to New York, <laughs> week it's even more. Yeah, yeah, it's too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love these coasts. Yeah. Yeah. You've been out here for a while. You've been out here. 93. 93. That's when. Uh, Jeez. V, we were working on Bottom Line and VG2. In 93? Yeah. That's when it started. That's when it started. That was, we were working on a double release. And then VG3 was like the first full on VG. Like I was out here from the get go in California filming that one. Yeah, so uh, how did that, you know, well, let's start with the Genesis intro. Mm-hmm. Ah, it kind of went there already. Yeah, it? It's, yeah, it actually went there. Good segue. So how did. How the start did, of it? How did, how did, it how did VG start? start? Yeah. Well, I guess Sean, Tom, Sean Tomlin and Morgan had Groove Productions, and they started Dare to Air, obviously the first, mm-hmm. one of the first, first rollerblading mm-hmm. video ever, street skating. And then they, uh, they wanted to do a video magazine, but also do feature rollerblading videos, you know, like the main videos, mm-hmm. and start the video magazine series. So they did one where they just got contribution footage, you know, the Dave Kolash one, the one I was in where I hit my head, a couple other people, like some really whack sections mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> from some people. Uh, and uh, they, I sent my edit in, they hit me up, they like contacted me like six months later and were like, do you film and edit and skate? I'm like, yeah. And at that point I just left corporate America. I had graduated from Pitt, was working sales repping, I paid my way through school. And I was like working in Philly at a skate, ski golf shop, sleeping on my brother Rob's couch, like literally just graduated from Pitt and mm. got a call to leave to go to California and start Video Groove. Like because you were doing videography at the time? Like yeah, I was, sent in an edit. I like I took a chance, edit. I sent an edit, and that's the edit that went in Video Groove uh-huh. 1. And then they called me oh, okay. when that was, mm. and I'm like, are you guys just going to do c- contribution footage? Mm-hmm. You're not going to have like a director and have something? And I'm like, this is how you need to do it. Like. So how did you even know about that to send it in? I just saw, well, I knew Dare to Air, and at the end of Dare to Air, they were, like, sending footage. Oh, at the end of section, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. okay. yeah. that's, like, a, such an old-school type of thing to do, to send in, like, an edit, send in a video, stuff like that. Yeah. That's, I, that's it, how it all starts. It was so new. You got to understand, this. there's no other videos. Yeah. I was, like, mm-hmm. you know, The Hoax and Dare to Air. Mm-hmm. And we were in Pittsburgh, and I was, like, I was skating with, like, two rollerbladers. One of them, two of my friends were, like, skateboard rollerblader friends. Mm-hmm. And we all skated together. So we would film their skateboard parts, and they'd film our rollerblade parts. No <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And we all skated the same skate park, and they, they took us all the street spots. And, yeah, it was like we were, doing hand, we were like doing front sides and the handrails, and it was just in that one video. So we're like, oh, maybe get sponsored. <laughs> Send in our part. But yeah. the, but then but then you laid it down like you guys need to get someone directing you need to do something like this and they were like yeah we do we'll hire you yeah they they knew they need somebody but how we structured it and how once I got out there and we that's when we kind of talked talked about how that should be because they more thought of it should be really heavily contribution based and I I believe in getting all the best footage you can but you also have to like lead by example and yeah. mm-hmm. be out there connect with the crews go to all the spots like mm-hmm. you know. You're not. I'm not trying to make enemies out there. I'm trying to like build networks. I'm yeah. trying to build scenes and connect everybody. That's what's great about Video Groove. Totally. Mm-hmm. You know, you, there's no, no one's. You're, you're for everybody. Yeah. VG is for the people. VG is for the people. Just like yes. Wu Tang's. Just like Wu Tang. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. VG right, Wu Tang right like this. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so you, people know you more for your video making rather than like your skating. But you did have a skating background or career somewhat before VG started. Yeah. Like well, what, what was your background before you started? I, kind of eclectic background because I have two, I've got two brothers and a sister. We're all very close, like 18, 16 months apart. And I have an older brother who's like sportsman and a younger brother, Rob, who's a musician. And uh, my younger brother, Rob, is a musician and a skater. Mm. And so we would go, I'd go hang with Rob and skate, skateboard BMX, go see shows. And Mark and I always be playing sports with. So I was like right in the middle. I would be very between my friends, both their friends, and doing whatever. So. 
when we were in college, like I think I was playing deck hockey, roller hockey, and someone told me about the skate park. And who was one of the hockey players, but he was one of my friends who skateboarded too. Mm. So that's how it's just weird how you get into stuff and mm. find certain things and what got you where you're at today. Yeah. But I was like 23 and working corporate America, like, you know what? I, I give this a shot. Like, I gotta always go do what I'm doing. Like, why not take a chance? And this, this, this culture sport is just starting. You, know? you started at 23? I just, I started skating at, let's see, first set of Bowers I had was like, I think it was. 2021 maybe mm-hmm. that's yeah, so old compared to like yeah what other people usually start skating at well i think like joe dentro is similar to like joe dentro started yeah. at like 21 something like that, oh wow 22. yeah we were older yeah we'd already gone through like our bmx and skateboarding days like, we, <laughs> sure, right? you know we I, like, that was an advantage for me because <clears throat> i think maybe if someone's younger and they started a video groove they would have tried to do what like four on one or props was doing. Mm, mm-hmm. I'm like, we didn't want to make it. There's, I mean, there's a format to a video magazine. There's a format to everything, but there's no reason why you can't put your own twist on everything. Right? Of course, you got to make it your own. Yeah, yeah. And Especially I with like a new sport. Yeah, you want to just like tricks. hop on the train with yeah, everyone else like, is doing. I would always like kind of fight against the whole like using skateboarding names to call rollerblading tricks. Right. I'd be like, why are you calling it that? Like, this is our, this is rollerblading. We can call it whatever <clears> we want. Like, like, like what? Like in the beginning, what was that? Oh, uh, like cabbing this? the tricks. Okay. I'm cabbing. like, that's Steve Caballero. He's a skateboarder. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like, and I grew up like loving all the sports, but rollerblading's got me where I'm at today. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and like call it, you know, like hurricane. Now else? it's a hurricane. Now it's yeah. an illusion. Yeah. I was always a big fan of the illusion. That was one of the things I yeah. pushed forward when we were skating. But yeah. Mm, totally. Yeah. And I would never try and like, this is how you should name it. It's like whatever is the most popular, whatever is con- considered by the skaters, the general yeah. name, mm-hmm. you know? But, it, you know, it, it, it gets caught on because from putting it out there into existence, too. It does. I think That's part point, of the fun of it. Yeah. Yeah, see where, where it lands and how it started. Right. I, I, in, like, the early days, correct me if I'm wrong, was, like, a soul grind I call the Smith grind? Well, that's what John said, right? Yeah. yeah. Like At least, yeah, yeah no, there's, but there I were, like, remember hearing that Similarities in sure. that way. Like, yes, yeah. yes. Hmm. Yes, it's crazy. that's what I'm talking about. No, but I like I like that. Glad that, they changed that. Yeah. <laughs> well, John Starr always helps, helps hates me telling the story, but it is true. Uh, we the Unities were first coming in. I remember being up north and first seeing them with John Starr and Julio skating these ledges. We always skated in San Jose to warm up, and I was like, "Oh, that's so sick!" I go, it's, "That pretzel grind looks a lot cooler than I thought it was going to hmm. look." And John's, I'm like, "What's the name of that trick, John?" He's like, "Kablow." And I'm like right. Kablow. <laughs> I don't know about that name, man. <laughs> and I did, and I was just constantly just, you know how we are in these no, guys, giving mm-hmm. shit no. the entire time. Yeah. And uh, weeks later, months later, we're all we're shooting for that. Uh, there's the cover where John's got the blue zip up breaker on, sh- freshly shaven head. He's right. doing Unity down that rail. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Eric Shrine yelled it out like Unity, and we were like, there was like 20 of us there. We're like, yeah. <laughs> we all, it was just became we were right at daily bread it was like almost from the pitcher onto the page yeah damn you know? kablow yeah the kablow. so uh, the <laughs> unity everybody could have been the kablow, kablow. <laughs> the unity could have been the kablow john star is gonna call me tomorrow and julio is gonna be laughing when he hears that story you know it's like that, that context actually ma- makes a lot of sense for like the name of other tricks seems like maybe people were just trying to be outrageous with the names yeah yeah, like, yeah with the fish brain porn star yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i guess yeah, so, yeah, so right. i can see Kab- yeah, everyone was younger too at I that time kablow like sitting in that seven, yeah, <laughs> being like, oh, the Kablow, man. Like, all right, righteous. And that was John that said that? Yeah, John Starr. John Starr? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure, like, it was a just, it's not John Starr's name. Maybe it's just what they were calling out there right. at, yeah. at the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just think it's a funny story. It's, like, it's something yeah, that it's I was a part of. That yeah. I, I was, yeah. It's the first thing I think about. Jeez. That's yeah. crazy. You were through a lot of history. Yeah. That, especially at that time. Fortunate enough to do so. Yeah. I mean, at 20, most kids my age, like I said, are suit and tie or mm-hmm. doing, you know, digging ditches, working right. hard, yeah. doing whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like traveling life. around the world with my rollerblade friends. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so with a bunch of lunatics having so, yeah, a good old time. Let me bring it back quick. Yes. So 23, you, tell them you need this. They hire you. So you leave from Philly. Mm-hmm. You go to California. Yep. You Now you're living here and you're starting to make the whole video groove series. First person I shot with was Brian Bell in Chula Vista, California. No, mm-hmm. that's a first great first ever person to shoot with. First person ever in Jeez. California. Like literally got landed here, unpacked my bags, had all the footage from the trip, and uh, Sean's like, I got to connect in San Diego, Brian Bell. I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen the footage from earlier from what you told me. So I went down there, and that was that was the beginning. What was that footage in? That footage was in Bottom Line and in VG2. 
because we were still working on when I got out here for a m few months, the finishing those videos up. And then mm -hmm. literally I was, while we were doing editing of both those videos, I was already starting to shoot for VG3. So you were just on it. VG3 was like the, st everyone asked me like, what's, when was like, what's your favorite video? What's the start? Like, those are the big questions I get a lot. Yeah, and uh, I got a ton this weekend. <laughs> like, VG3 was the start. Uh -huh. VG4 set the tone. Hmm. Like set the, set the mark. Like, and I, I think I heard you talk about too yeah, also. VG4 yeah. was, that's when you, you'd arrive. Yeah. And yeah. we had gotten the chops down from three. Yeah. Three. Like you could see oh, the evolution yeah. from eight. I mean, three was pretty established, but like we kind of like put a yeah. little, little bit of edge to it and a little more creative on mm -hmm. four and the skating also had oh, reached yeah. the, the kind of little cleaner. Mm -hmm. like it was getting, it was going big, but it was like more people, more variety. And we saw more places I think in four. So yeah. that's an exciting time. It, like being a it part of that from the beginning. The most exciting. You're time. like, yo, this is it. This is it. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. This is the stuff. When did it, when did it click? Like, VG3. The, like I when it was done, you were like, this is it. Or like when you started filming, like we're going to make this, you know, a thing. I, I knew VG3. I the opening. The song was Karma to Burn. It was an instrumental. Bill, you, your kind of track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> track. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's, it's split screen. I remember being inspired mm -hmm. from uh, Plan B video with, a, with Rodney Mullen with the split screen mm -hmm. and wanted to do it vertical instead of horizontal. Just so I didn't have to do the same. I don't want to. Yeah, do right. exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. But, You know, you get inspired by other yeah, artists course, and other course. things. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah. And that was it. And then bam, because it's like, you know, and then right into the, the jazzy, like forward, you know, mm -hmm. which is, you got to hit them. And that was, that was kind of like the one, two. And then from there, it's a mixtape, you know, mm -hmm. you're mixing up the sections according to who you have, mini views, visual aids, you know. Right. That's what I loved. It was yeah. like chapters. Yeah. Because I'm like, look at 401 and props. They do great. I mean, they're. they're they do such a good job at 401, especially. It's like, but I don't want to do it the same way. Yeah. Like, and each issue would be something new and fresh. Mm hmm. You know? And, like, the names of each issue, too. Like, yeah. coming up with the names. Yeah, that's some, like, yeah, it's like of an album cover, yeah. right? And we would all sit there. It would be everybody that's working fun. at VG mm -hmm. and Groove. Because you got to yeah. remember Groove. We just didn't have VG working out of those offices. Yeah. We had Paved New World Distribution, which had mm -hmm. fiction and all the Groove stuff. And we ended up taking our own distribution up through Video Groove. We ended up selling our own videos. We took it away from our distributor, mm -hmm. did it on our own independently. And uh, Fiction clo Clothing was out of there. We had visual and graphic artists. We worked on Vulcan videos and we did the first uh, action sports TV on we ESPN Vulcan with videos? Kids in the Way. Yeah. Really? Dude, Rune Glifberg and Remy were my roommates. Oh, man. In the Groove House. Dude, the first party I ever DJed was with Sublime playing in the one room and I was DJing in the other. It was a Halloween party in 1994 <laughs> at the Groove House. No that is way. so yeah. crazy. Yeah, Remy was my roommate. That's so it was crazy. In, in, dude, insane times, 90. Three when I landed there till, yeah, two thousand. Yeah, so I mean, like you land, you're doing your thing, and obviously it's like it's a lot of work, but it seems like to be successful, right? People are like picking up. It's like yeah, yeah. So it's working out, and like you're you're still doing it, and obviously with other other bands, DJ and doing this stuff, go on this ride for like years, and like travel the world, cultivate this thing. This is insane, dude. I I snuck on the wa what warp tour in '94. <laughs> you know, like literally snuck on the tour. End up. Earning my keep by helping set up the ramps, rollerblading, the street demos, like being the only street rollerblader. How'd you sneak with in? All skateboarders. I, I literally got snuck onto the bus, and they found, once they found out you're on the tour, they were like, ah, oh, well, you can just help. But Kevin Lyman is like the coolest guy ever. Why did you want to sneak on? Like, was, Cause, well, I was, was going it, for was, Groove because I was going to get all this great footage of all these bands. We we're going to help with the Warped Tour documentary, but like, oh, okay. we kind of knew Kevin, and you know, I was kind of invited <laughs> through helping with Volcom <laughs> filming, but mm. and also rollerblading. But that's when I met. For real, for real, it's like Tom Fry was like trying to get me on and Renee mm -hmm. and those guys. So I was filming stuff for VG too. Yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. But gutter mouth, seaweed, sublime, quicksand. This is 93, 94. Yep. 94 Warp Tour. Dang. Dude, I remember playing ping pong with Gwen Stefani in San Francisco <laughs> before she blew. And me and Tom were like, wow, she's super cute and cool. And then and we got like stage two hours later, we're like roaming the upper concourse of this open amphitheater up in San Francisco and being like, wow, I had no idea she was in a band. No way. She is amazing. You thought no she was like a way. random girl? Well, we kind of knew because she was a little get, a little get up on, but mm. we we're just like, maybe. Mm. But you know, <laughs> she's playing the main stage. There's multiple stages uh, of the Warped Tour. And yeah. we we're like, wow. Because they hadn't blown yet at all. I wouldn't have never heard. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. That's insane. I know. So they're just like getting their chops up at that time. Yep. Oh. The next three years, they went mega. 
And so now you're just in there in the mix. Well, again, yeah, I'm sitting in Huntington Beach, Philly California. Kid, Philly kid. Philly kid, living mm-hmm. the dream. Living the dream. Traveling in Europe a couple times a year to go to all, all those crazy skate events. Yeah. And you've been on, you've probably been on maybe more tours than almost like any other person in the skate industry. Probably, like with all these videos you've done, <laughs> what tour was your favorite? Can you think of one? I think, well, I have to give the Sunshine Tour as the craziest tour I've ever been on. Just because, personally, you know, how much I had at stake, who was on the tour, the schedule, the, the snowstorms. Right? Yeah, and the police, the amount of police that we saw per day <laughs> and in a row. How long was that and tour? And we didn't miss a date. It was two weeks. Two weeks it was two to three weeks, twi- and we did it twice. And I almost, like, the, f- the first time, I, almost, I felt like I almost, like, had a breakdown from, a, like, no sleep and I look like John Julio before the blank cup. <laughs> like I look at his face sometimes and, I, and like John's a dear friend of mine. I just look at his face. I'm like, Oh my God, dude. I like it. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. Yeah. And you don't want to sit there and be like, I know the feeling, John, let me yeah, tell you yeah. how it was when I was younger. Yeah. You know, I just look at him and I do the Billy hug. Yeah. The Billy hug. Do one of those. Yeah. And I go, Maybe I do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, I thank him. But yeah, so that was a Sunshine Tour. Yep, that was Sunshine Tour. That was mid mid hype VG. That was probably in, Sunshine Tour was like ninety seven, ninety eight, I think. So so what was it like the police? And everything was like everything going wrong. Or like what? <laughs> no, it was it was just natural. Like, like we're bat out of hell. Yeah, like we mm-hmm. like in Chicago had seen cops like four times in a row. It was all about like fireworks. Mid, you gotta remember this was yeah, like fireworks. This was like <laughs> land speed days. Right. Like Bam and those guys were in their hype. You know, yeah, yeah. and you we were all young skating mm-hmm. and doing the tour. Like, mm-hmm. we were literally shooting bottle rockets or Roman candles off, doing 110 miles an hour in our passenger vans, mm-hmm. coming, coming into Chicago hot. You know, every hotel would be like, what, send off something like that. Yeah. You know? yeah like, yeah. or we get to the skate park and there'd be police waiting for us. Like, oh, man. Was, waiting for you? Yeah. That was in, Indiana, in yeah, Indiana. Just waiting for you? Waiting for us. Something that we did on the highway. Like, we was getting no. into town. And how they know that you were skaters going going to the skate park? Because there's like, uh, you know, they just know like thousand kids rowdy kids like who else would do that? Yeah. <laughs> then you have, that's when I get out and I, this, I probably at the hype of my diplomatic skills. <laughs> Anyways, I got older. I, I had tons of friends who were police officers and I'd always talk to them about those experiences and they'd be like, you know, you probably got away with a lot because you were honest. Yeah. And if they ask you questions, I'm like, yeah, I learned that really early on. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, yeah. to tell them everything, the truth and the yeah. cops are just human lie detectors. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Yeah, they're going to I mean, they deal with it all the time. All the time. All the time. They think you're, you think you're the first Yahoo that's going to yeah, tell them. Cops. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's tough to also lie under you know pressure. Why, really? Because you skaters leave us there. That's it, right? Yeah, you guys are out, and we're picking up our camera gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not nice, right? Oh, yeah, you have to deal with Billy the would stay. Night nice stay. Billy would stay. I'd hang back. Yeah, I'd hang back. Yeah. Or I'd help you pick up your camera gear and get you out of there. <laughs> Did that happen a lot? Like, oh yeah, you're running out of spots, and you're like the last person, like setting, like putting your shit together. Yeah. Well, and imagine you get bagged like and everyone EK, else is done. And he's got like five flashes set up. And oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, like, I've been in that situation too. Yeah. As a photographer in, in video, yeah. Yeah. You always get stuck. Oh. In the height of VG, what was like the busiest point, like the, you know, where you were doing the most or selling the most? Like, what was like the most, like, oh man, this is like, this is too much work I'm doing. This is, this is a lot. Yeah. Good question. Two part answer. Mm-hmm. A. Never where we were as height as when I first got out there because you got to remember when videos were being sold, it was just two outlets. It was the the hoax guys, Craig and Evan, and the Groove guys, mm-hmm. me and Sean and Morgan, That's and it. and the VG affiliate family. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so it was. I think they were selling. I think at the very beginning, like Dare to Air and Hoax. So I think they sold like twenty thousand copies each mm-hmm. in and around that. Mm-hmm. You know, not to be specific, but then mm-hmm. slowly it would always come down. No matter how good we were doing, how many things, it was just slowly the market was slowly yeah, yeah. coming down and more people were putting out videos and I would pull pull from those numbers as well. Mm-hmm. But it was a slow, slow, slow I always tell people that story after the fact, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm like it, it was, just whittled, it was always whittled. downhill after. Yes, always downhill. <laughs> so but we, we took some of the distribution back early on, and we made more of a profit margin because we did our own right. sales. But mm-hmm. then it became really hard to keep that up, right. and he gave it back to the distribution. When I took it over in 99 ownership, mm-hmm. yeah. Sean and Morgan gave me the company. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just – I let the distribution do all the work, you know? It's like – yeah, your first one yeah. was what VG ninety nine. It would have been Battle My Crew. It's Battle Your Crew. Very 12. specifically, yeah, twelve. Yeah. as Battle mm-hmm. My Crew because mm-hmm. I wanted that first issue under ownership to have a statement about, like, 
for the people. Like yeah. we were joking about in the beginning. Yeah. Like I wanted like <clears throat> all you ever hear in the hype of it was like, man, if I did my own video or if I did my own section. Yeah. And I'd always hear that a lot at Woodward. And I remember the idea came across when I was up at Woodward, like walking through the back of these cabins and listening to these kids talk. Mm. And I'm like, man, it'd be so sick to have like a battle video. Yeah. Like have kids do their own crews, like and the best crews, like do their own sections. That's so sick. And just like, like almost like the first of its kind rap battling for, yeah. for, for but for skating, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, this would, this concept would be so sick. Like voting card masters division, new school division. Like, yeah. Yeah. Was so, anyone else doing that? Or is that like a VD? No, original? not in that. And I really would never say that. But like at the same time, and then years later, like Red Bull uh, eventually came up with those filmer battle things. And I was the same concept, like going that was way later, though. and going out to the same areas and having five different filmers go out with five different skaters mm -hmm. and do, you know, get all day or two days of film. And then you come back with a, a mm -hmm. battle edit. You know, mm -hmm. I, I love that kind of shit. Like, so you ended up like buying it from them or they just didn't want to be a part of it anymore how did it end up oh no they hands? they literally came in and said listen dave groove's breaking up okay. like it was just like you you're so you are vg mm -hmm. you know the whole reason why it came out and it's like yeah i remember i was a i was an employee of groove inc who owned video groove so when i got ownership i really and then i got to receive the full benefits of the money and be able to make every single decision but it's not like i had total influence when i was with sean and morgan too it's not like mm -hmm. it was a it was a conglomerate. It, you were kind of always like, yeah, totally. Nah, they let play. me. They knew it was my deal. Like I ran Video Groove in, within Groove, but they would just be there if I needed them, or would always come in to watch the final cuts mm -hmm. and just be a sounding board. Plus, they were, they would help with the ads. Yeah, the yeah. ads were like fun. Yeah, those ads are some they of the best fun. ads in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. Played ads back in the day and like you were making marketing the ads back or? in the day was so much fun. Yes, and yeah. funny you should say that because CDS grind plates were always the final. I was ads. gonna we say were, yeah, that was the, those are the drinks. best ads. Yes, and do the VO. Wait, so you did? Footage. You would make those ads? We'd make for, those. That would be that, the, is that how it worked? Final move. Huh? That's how it worked. Like they would be like, oh, I want to put it in your video, and you would make their own edits. Like like Arlo was like super creative and Shane. Like they, you know, they would do their. That's such like an unheard of or thing sometimes nowadays. Sometimes they come with us and we do them together. Yeah, yeah. Everyone always thought it was like this. We were always enemies, and like it was the farthest thing from it. Mm. Like, yeah, we all appreciate it. What else did you used to do besides the CDS one? Did you do the CDS ones? Box, uh, you name it. Like, uh, there's tons that we did. Fiction. You guys fiction. did fiction. Yeah, yeah. I was. I remember I that. Be doing the fiction. Yeah, one. you guys yeah. did the one with the fire. The yeah. Fiction. yeah, yeah, the yeah. Best, the best fiction as the first one. Uh, which one? Which was the first one? It's the one the dude gets sucked up into the airplane jet <laughs> at the end. <laughs> I, I, you don't know that one? No, I don't know that. Oh, roll the tape. Oh, man. We'll definitely roll play it back. Tape. We'll definitely yeah. find it. It's, it's got online. the best song, too. It's got all these like crazy uh, fighter jet test crash crashes. Mm -hmm. Dang man, it, it's those videos are so fun. I love like the sections too, like the the second hand, the tra transitions, and all these things like that. Unnatural, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. whole section for unnatural. That takes work. You got to know everyone's stuff. Hey, was that switch or something yeah. like that? Thank you. That That's true. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you, Billy. Yeah. yeah, that makes up for all the names I misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I that still was, catch crap to this. So what? Guy. Did you just like live did, behind a TV for like the whole time? No, it was great. I tell you, like my daily daily grind was like. I guess we take it from when I wake up and I'll get to the night. I wake up probably around noon mm -hmm. and I check emails because back in the day it was like 56, 56K dial-up. Yeah. Uh, get emails, ship anything out. It had to be shipped out. Uh, start organizing the session. And the sessions usually go from three or four into the evening, get dinner, mm -hmm. get, into, get all the new footage mm -hmm. in the computer and be working on editing from anywhere from once footage got in and we had done dinner, it was like 10 or 11, editing would start through the night till six in the morning. Jeez. Wow. That was pretty much every day. Like Jeez. when I was home. That's intense. It's intense. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Cause I live in an apartment complex. Like, um, while of the house, the groove house, I, I told you stories about from before, yeah. from 93, 94, when I landed till 96, 97, moved to Costa Mesa. And that's when that was the apartment complex, mm -hmm. which became basically VG's offices. Mm. <laughs> that was, and that was it. Yeah. Ryan's lackey roommate first. And then Randy Spicer. <laughs> and everybody else who crashed on the couch. So Randy lived here in Costa Mesa. He did. Oh wow. Yeah. So those are good times. Yeah, I remember seeing good you guys times. in Irvine. Yeah. 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 Good but, times. Shout out to Davey Blair. Big shout out to Davey Blair. Yeah. I think he watches the show too. Maybe he's watching now. Who knows? Davey's smart. He has good taste. He's definitely yeah. listening. He's definitely listening. Yes. He knows what's happening. He wants to know I just what's happening. Talked up. to Davey last month. I miss that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I miss him too. He's so funny. He's a good guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't think a lot of people know that you and Randy were roommates. Roommates. For so long. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty he, cool. Oh, that kid, he would play. 
video games all night. And then I was telling you guys earlier, we'd make breakfast sandwiches mm. when we were done with <laughs> editing and his video video gaming, and we play ping pong, mini ninja ping pong. Mm-hmm. Why was it ninja? Because it was half a table. So you just like ninjas doing it? Yeah, but we were like we did <laughs> like, like like professional. Ping pong players. Ping pongers? Like, yeah, but like, you'd be hit the ball and you'd be back over here hitting yeah, yeah. the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy time. Ninja ping pong. Yeah, ninja ping, ping pong. pong. I tell you, I got my, got my chops up at Woodward. Hmm. Yeah. That was, that was definitely. That's a good place to, like, get, like, those skills up. Like, you know, there's places, nothing to do there, right? Yeah, yeah. You have all this free time. Exactly. You're, like, you're right. skating You're doing together. all kinds of stuff. You're fishing. Yeah. You're hiking. I'm juggling now. Yeah, you're skating, yeah, like, three times a day. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you say that you were part of, you were there when, like, you were trying to get blading into Woodward. Yes. What was that like? How did that happen? What was that like? What did you have to do to get blading into Woodward? That's a great question, Austin. Thank you. Uh, 1992, I was in Pittsburgh uh, at Shady Skates. Rob Pell was Shady Skates' manager. It's my dog still to this day. And um, we were hitting Woodward up because we saw the brochures because the skateboarding and BMX was going on at, at the time for mm-hmm. almost coming up on 10 years for them. They started in 1970 with, as a gymnastics camp mm-hmm. and i think they introduced freestyle bmx and then skateboarding so they were like five years going strong with those two sports and we saw the ramps i was like man we need to get rollerblading up there like we we need to go at least at bare minimum let's go ride the ramps so we nagged them gary invited us up we got to test the ramps and mm-hmm. um matt Lindemuth came up from east coast because i knew matt from kutztown from pa mm-hmm. and he came up with me and we got to ride the morton bowl the Morton Ooh, Mini, the Morton yeah. Bowl, yeah, and Egypt, the first incarnation of Egypt, Ooh. and it also had big hips there too. And Egypt I was, like, looks in so love cool, with, the, yeah. with all three of those things. So then <clears throat> we were begging them, like, yeah, I can't, we're thinking about starting a roller bay program. We were like, mm. yeah, you gotta have us come help you do it. <laughs> uh, didn't hear anything. Middle of summer, I'm literally doing demos in like Virginia, like a launch ramp demos, and it's like my first year out of corporate trying to do the skate film thing. And this guy, somebody calls me from the office, like, can you be at camp next week to start? It's like halfway through summer, they started the rollerblade. Oh, what the hell? Program. And How did they get students, like a campers in there? Yeah. If uh, it was in the middle of summer. I don't know, but people came. Oh, shit. They came. And we had like 20, 30 kids each week. And I think 40 to 50, 60 by the end. Mm-hmm. And I, I even think, no, I don't think any pros came until the next year. I don't think Chris, Chris might have came the first year, <laughs> Edwards, but... Definitely in the second year. Um, it was me and Ryan Zlacki, who ended up becoming one of my best friends. He that's like where we met, right at Woodward. We we're the basically the inline directors and started the inline program. And wow. caught like we had to basically prove ourselves. Like the the skate director was a nutbag, his name was Ozzy. <laughs> and he was just like met me at the office, like, Hey, what's up, man? I'm Ozzy. I don't know why you guys are here. I thought no hate rollerblading. Like what? your bunk's right over there. Good luck. And I was like, what? okay, this is how it's going to be. Damn. But, but I walk in, I walk into our bunk and it's just like, it's like military style bunks. It's stinky, smelly. And I put <laughs> my stuff down, but I was like, F it, man. Like, this is my ticket to let's get, let's get yeah. this done. Right. Yeah. And I see Chad Vaught, who's like a Seattle ripping skateboarder, yeah. mini ramp skater. And he's like, pops his head up from a nap and he goes, Hey man, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I just got here. He's like, you want to go for a ride? Like something out of Days and Confused. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, you got some? I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, man, I don't. He's like, I do. Let's go. You got a car? I'm like, let's go. <laughs> Dude, went and had a nice little little drive. Yeah. Came back and ripped the mini together. And I was like, let's go. And I started fil- forming alliances and friendships. And I, you know, I grew up skateboarding and BMXing, so I can handle my own. Yeah. And Ryan was a really good BMXer, too. Mm-hmm. And we just partied with them. And we became friends with everybody. And Ozzy was like the last person to finally accept us. Like. Because we just ripped. Like, Ryan was really good launch ramp and bull skater. Yeah, I was totally. like a street skater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was out there filming all the time, and we would always be helping and just busted our ass. But then Ozzy finally came around? At the end, yeah. He, he did come but around. But he's still though. psycho. Like, he still <laughs> tried to make our life hell. Yeah, yeah. still, but he, but, but he did break. He oh, he around. did. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. He was, though he had problems with everybody. It wasn't yeah. just me. He was like, one of those guys. Yeah. yeah, he just a ball buster and yeah. just took his own power to be... Yeah. You know, too much in a small just, little fishbowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a bummer. Yeah. yeah. Good stories. Yeah, it's a good story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe tough. And then what? They hired you to do like Colony of Summer because you did the Colony of Summer. That's yeah. a whole so. different story. I broke my ankle filming. Uh, we were doing a segment for the Warp Tour. That actually got, after I snuck on the Warp Tour, Kevin Lyman put me on as a contracted skater the next year. I turned pro for Rosies, but I broke my ankle filming. A contracted skater for Warp Tour? Yeah. 
as like <laughs> a rollerblade street skater. But Kevin was like, Dave's filming. He's helping with the ramps. That's like, right. A lot of people don't know that they used to contract skaters. Yeah. Rollerbladers. Get paid. Yeah. Well, Tom I'm and on the Tim world. and Renee mm -hmm. and uh, Scotty Crawford. Scotty was on it too. Yeah, Scotty Crawford. Those guys were the Warp Tour vert ramp guys. Mm -hmm. I was just a slowly little scrub, just skating this little. You just want to get in there. Scotty Crawford too. Oh yeah. Shout out Scotty Crawford. Yeah. yeah. Scotty Crawford yeah. is he the made man. It up. Yeah. And Tom Fry, Scotty Crawford, all the Aussies. Uh, so yeah, um, it was uh, it was an amazing time. Mm -hmm. Amazing time to be around. And so how did the Colony of Summer stuff Oh, yeah. Start? Broke my ankle filming a segment with MTV for the Warp Tour because they were doing profiles on all the skaters who were going on the Warp Tour. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that was when I was learning like the Alley of Crumb. I, I was at the, for me, I mean, I was, I was lucky to be sponsored. I just got. What would you say? I, Alley of Crumb? I, these are like flat, backward flat elliptical spins, like going Alley Oop, you know, like snowboarding. Yeah. Coming okay. off like front side and going. Turning back that way, okay. like flat spin. Okay. Like I was no, was it was like there was bios, there was oh, misty. What did you call him? It was an alley. -oop. We call it an alley -oop crumb. I crumb? never, I never crumb. heard that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I never. That name never took <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> kind of but, like, but, but I was skating really good, yeah. and I like literally the resi was new. The resi. Anyone who's been to Woodward, they know about the resi mats. How you can learn how to do launch ramp yeah. stuff and right away clean because it's hard plastic. But when it first got installed. It wasn't all plastic. They had literally had open mat, blue underneath gym mats that are above the resi or were exposed. Mm -hmm. I was doing a launch kicker up to that Woodward sign that's next to the vert ramp. Mm -hmm. And I was doing mute wall rides way up there and I'm coming down and I missed the resi and landed mm -hmm. right on the gymnastic mat. I just grabbed my ankle and popped it clean. Ah. Out. Like full fed tip. Oh man. 12 screws. Uh. Yeah, full metal plate in my left ankle still there today. Oh man. But that was it. That started my judging career. Yeah, <laughs> and video group getting paid to be on tour for judging. Wow! So I like this. And then you were ASA Mark Billick at NIS for help pay for a lot of contest footage for NIS mm -hmm. and my travel. So all I had to do is judge. So, but so then, how, how did Colony Summer come over that? Because I broke my ankle, they had to get a golf cart, mm -hmm. help me get up and down the thing, and I'd already started shooting a bunch of footage. Yeah, and I convinced Gary. Um, to do a video. I don't, I don't know how I convinced him to do Because you got BMX it. and skateboarding. Yeah, that yeah, was your I, had a bunch of, I think a lot of the guys we were filming with were like in the background saying, yo, Dave's got getting a lot of good footage. Like mm -hmm. he's getting all the best guys. So when I when we made it, the first one, it was like a huge hit. Like I remember being on a, a the next year, being on a golf outing with him. Um, play a little golf. Okay. Mm -hmm. Play a little golf. Okay. Ended up, ended up paying off because Gary's a big golfer. Mm -hmm. And when he showed the video to like all the gymnastics people and all of his big big to do people and I was there and it was just like everyone was going crazy mm -hmm. and he from that moment on I could see it in his eyes like we're doing this every year sick yeah so seven eight colony summers later until I handed it off to Dave Meddy and the gang that's sick man. yeah and you're one of the few people who actually from our world who got to film other sports like skateboarding BMX and all that stuff like that how was it filming them compared to like blading or how like did you learn anything by doing that yeah. Filming three different sports instead of just one. Yeah. And with my background of being a BMXer and a skateboarder. And exactly. A yeah, that probably yeah, helped out a lot. I helped out a ton. And also, filming with them is totally different. Like, mm -hmm. filming skateboarding is completely different. That's what I'm saying. Like, and yeah. it's biking. Mm -hmm. Totally. They're, They're all different. It's yeah. yeah you got, just you like got, you filming know skateboarding and, and, or surfing and snowboarding. Because mm -hmm. of Fuel TV, I did all that. You know, it's um, you have to come in humble and also respect, like, the guys who've done it before you. Of course, yeah. And learn, like, already know things at work mm -hmm. you know within that frame of cinematography within that sport and there's reasons why those guys have been doing it for a long time there's totally. reasons why certain things look the way they mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. not to do it right yeah it doesn't mean you have to copy it i mean or do exactly like it but did anybody from any of those other like filmers from those other worlds like get mad at you or anything like that because you were like filming their always. sport or anything like that not, not mad but they'd always it, it's always Talk it shit. always goes like this yeah. so you roll a bite huh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i heard you roll i heard you like yeah, like this, they especially if you've already met them. If it's like you just meet them, like I remember being at Field TV and going on my first skateboard tour for like Skateboard Mag, or mm -hmm. it's like a do tour combo sponsor skateboard tour. I remember having joining, so this joining like when this has been 2004. 2004, okay, it's like the detour, or something like that. It was called, um, something like that. And I just got on the tour hot right in the middle of it. And my Field TV guy, producer friends, you know, kind of. Rat me out like uh, my friend Dave's he's a really good guy, but yeah, he's a rollerblader. Uh. Kind of thing. So as soon as I got on tour, they're like, "Hey!" It was like 
we shot that day at the park and then we're on the bus and everyone starts having a drink and starting to gamble and then someone just comes right at you like oh so you're a roll bear and everyone goes whoa because i'm like the only roll blader on a whole skateboard tour uh-huh. yeah. it's not my first rodeo though yeah. i'm like yeah dude i roll blades so mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. like yeah when you'll be in five days you'll be begging me to, to film you follow cam with on my mm-hmm. roll blades yeah and everyone's like oh sure. back and forth and it starts getting fun i'm like oh, and then they keep going you're like all right dude Give me your skateboard. I'll pop shove it over the corner of the hip before you can 360 the pyramid. Let's do that tomorrow. Oh, shit. And then if they, if they do it, you're like, all right, let's go. Mm. Either, no matter what happens, it's going to be funny. It's going to be yeah. fun. It's going to bond you regardless. Totally. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it does. You just don't ever run from it. Why would you run from it? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. embrace who you are. Totally. Embrace what yeah, yeah, you've done of course. and yeah. be proud of it. And that's yeah. what I love about the role playing community. And like so many talented people have gone on and still given back and are still there this weekend who are talented, who do amazing things. Mm-hmm. Like I can list ten of my favorite rollerblade guys that are successful doing what they love and still have homage and have love for role playing mm-hmm. and are amazing at what they do totally. outside of role playing. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah, because we don't follow like we're always getting put in this box. Yeah, you really blade. Ah, blah blah blah. Mm. It's like, yeah, but that just pushes us to do our to blaze our own path. Totally. Right? I so, feel that 100. percent Yeah. Did Did you that deal with like that a lot going on? And first of all, that was awesome. Yeah. I was <laughs> but yeah, but that's I, I always tell people that when they give me that you know that old tired line like, oh man, you sold out or you went to go film at Fuel TV mm. and you did all these other sports. I'm like. Think of it this way, dude. I'm out there talking to the other sports, and I'm mm. facing the music. You guys are in your little rollerblading world, and mm. the only people you're dealing with is people you see at your park. Mm-hmm. Like I'm dealing with the top end industry people and decision makers and influencers. So if anything, you're you're the one who's like dealing with it. Yeah, yeah I'm like just think of it from my point of view. Like, and I'm not hiding. I'm like I'm representing. That's sick. Yeah. Do you ever feel any kind of burden on that because you were kind of that guy at all? You're no. like, nah, you're just doing whatever the fuck Never. you're doing. Mm-hmm. Never. No, it's it gives you. It's a. I, I mean, well, I'm so thankful to have that opportunity in video group. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I'm thankful to have weekends like this. And like, I was telling you, like, just kids come up to you out of nowhere, and influence <laughs> yeah. their life in in a positive yeah. way. Yeah. And that's way more important to leave your mark with somebody else in life than money. Totally. No, no, it's like connections, and it's what you do mm-hmm. on your time here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You've you've always been like that. Like ever since I first met you, very good at connecting to people. Like I think that yeah. was a big part of what made VG so successful. Thank you. And wanting everyone to be a part of it because you were like, yeah, yeah, like a camera courage. Yeah, right. Like a lot, the lot juice. Of, well, there was always the VG courage. <laughs> people yeah, have VG right. courage. Yeah, that's a thing. But it's a part of it. It's connected, right? Totally. To my personality, to yeah, the crew that we built, the, the VG family. You totally. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, well, there's different ways because you know you can come off like, especially from the position of. Uh, oh. Of and power and having mm. a name and yeah. you know being pretentious and stuff like that, but you were never that way. No. You're, you're always like uh. com- getting people, making people feel comfortable, and yeah. I think that was a big part of the yeah. whole VG thing. Yeah, I think it helps me in my job even today as a company owner, campsite, and being a producer and a, being on the other end of the mic like you guys, interviewing people, like uh, connecting with them, and sometimes in a very short time, and having to be able to get their story out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Did Did you deal with a lot of see like I didn't I didn't know about uh. About you talking about people selling out, and people say, "Oh, you sell." Did you get a lot of that? Yeah. Did you hear that? When I first went to TV, <laughs> really? for sure. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Cause you know, VG was going. Yeah. It was like twenty two was just coming out, mm-hmm. and I got the job offer. I was, I had people had no idea that I was about ready to shut VG down anyway because mm-hmm. they couldn't, af- couldn't afford to keep it going anymore. I was like putting out like five to six titles a year. I was doing IMYTs with John, at least one to two big VGs a year, and a team video. I mean, Solomon still not like that, making right? it yeah. Up. yeah, I was gonna ask before, like VG twenty three was last VG. Like, if there was a time before that when you thought VG was gonna end, and that was just when you started your career at Fuel TV. Yeah, I got, literally got a second lifeline from my buddy Sean Tomlin, who gave me my first. Him and Morgan Stone gave me my first opportunity to come out from the East Coast to do Video Groove. Sean was one of the three, two, two VPs to start the Fuel TV channel and brought me in as one of the original four producers to start the channel. I was there before launch. And yeah, I remember I was at the beach. I was at Winter Music Conference in Miami. And I was on the beach. I got a phone call. And I was like. Oh, you're at like, WMC? Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing a lot of the people from New York go to. A lot of New Yorkers go yeah. to. Oh, you kidding me? Oh, For yeah. sure. Yeah, my brother Rob, like, obviously. I bet Philly, too. House yeah. DJ. And he's, he plays down there uh, all the time and mm-hmm. does reggae and house down there. But, yeah. I remember getting the call and being like, oh, thank God. Because what that did, people, role players don't know that that helped me finish 
VG the way I wanted to. Like I basically I got I was on salary at Fuel TV and I finished twenty three and best of volume two, hmm. like on the weekends and at night and mm. yeah. Because I'm like, I was not going to not finish what I'd set out to do, like those two titles. That's good that you finished them. But then after that, you were like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to focus on, you know, 11 years of yeah. VG. Yeah, I had to. It was like, I was like literally moonlighting while I was Fuel TV. I was working, and Fuel TV was like just launching, so you can imagine how busy it was. Like, right. I'm like mm-hmm. traveling, starting the first hands and going to Marseille and filming Ryan Wilburn, coming home, like working 12 hour days, and then like doing a few hours of VG stuff at night. Mm-hmm. And then on Sundays, going to film Gonzo in East LA, the only hey, so day I had off. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Like Gonzo, you filmed for an hour for, for I mean a day for a year, like yeah. one day, day a week, week for a year. year. Yeah, that's, that's a sick final part to film Gonzo's. It was. Yeah, what a true guy. And he's like was so thankful. Oh, he he's always been humble, humble, humble and grateful, humble and he's kid, a gracious, yeah. good guy. Yeah, he's yeah, good character. Yeah, man. Yeah, true. He, he was the closer of the VG series, right there. He Did, was. Do you have? I know you have like you have to have a ton of uh, obviously VG stories, but I know you like talking about the uh, the Carlos thing in VG twenty. Oh yeah, and stuff like that. But I never heard you really dig into that. I guess why? Sure. Yeah, that was like such a crazy experience, which you could clearly tell it is like why it is. You know. Yeah, there's a ton of top ten, twenty, like most. I probably adrenaline rush, dangerous moments of filming VG, and that was for sure number one. Mm-hmm. So what was going on? So we that- were down. Either starting, probably starting or coming through on the FID tour. FID tour is always hot, uh, kind of centered in Atlanta, mm-hmm. where we kick it off. And we kind of go through Texas and make that southern swing. Mm-hmm. FID tour, man. <laughs> yes. What yeah, a what tour. tour. Yeah, that was a whole different Charles Charles Dun- Was Charles, Charles Dunkel, Dunkel the, he yeah. named it? Was he the one who? Yeah. Yeah? FID, dude. FID. <laughs> oh, man. Dude. Yeah, and then everyone, it was everyone's, it was like the call. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were standing up in New York. You're very FID, yeah. dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah FID Older crew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've yelled that out several times seeing your video parts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. FID, what, yes, a, yes. what a... You need a video group cool. FID shirt. Yes. <laughs> oh, there we go. New swag. Oh, see, that, 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 that'll be, that could be like a good like little... Uh, concept for like the video grooves like because uh, mm-hmm. you're doing soft goods now yeah but that's a cool like little concept of like little like classic slogans or things from like all the old vgs yeah, like, yeah. Little, just things like oh that's that like you read and you're like oh. yeah and then you're oh that's that and yeah like, fucking yes. FID would be one that's yeah, really cool it's all about the remix yeah i love that yeah. man yeah. and nostalgia man nostalgia is big it is big nostalgia sells it's good to be old right now yeah people people still know it's cool i yeah. know that's cool that do you get like um you said people are coming up to you at the uh, blade cup were there any like people that you would thought like oh this person might be too young to to know my stuff like any young kids coming up mm, like, oh, that's you? a good one that's going trying to remember it's sometimes hard to tell mm. especially with the europeans yeah, who's yeah. younger and who's not yeah. <laughs> but my best interaction was with nick lomax okay oh man and i've been a fan of nick lomax game for a long time yeah, yeah. we i never get to see him or meet him like yeah. but we talk uh, like i'll give him a message on facebook quick mm. dm back and forth mm. or something like that and when he sees me, he is pretty lit up after the premiere uh-huh. Friday night when I get down there. Yeah. And he just, I hear my name like, Dave Payne, mate. <laughs> like, I just look over and I'm like, Nick Lomax. So now I get to meet him the first time. Dave just, Payne, mate. Yeah, just, and he's with all the kids from like Northern England, yeah, yeah. Scotland, Dublin. The Irish kids, yeah. Irish kids, yeah. yeah. And I just, I love, I love that. Yeah, they're, they're a fun crowd. They're fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was really neat. And he just he was paying me out, like to the point I'm like, stop, dude, I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, it was, I was really excited to meet him. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. I'm psyched, Nick Lomax, you are. Are you going to skate? Yeah. <laughs> my knee, man. My knee is wasted. <laughs> That's yeah. sick. He asked you to skate, though. No, I, I asked him to oh, skate. Oh, yeah. I, okay. uh, I want to oh, see yeah. him skate. Yeah, no one wants to see me skate. <laughs> Come on, no way, no way, man. We went skating a few years back. You yes, were, we did. You were, you were skating great. Yeah, you. You were skating. Ah, uh, yeah. come on. Skating. No, you. Yes. No, you. <laughs> no, no, you. No, you. It's cool to see like, how like you could feel like you know somebody just from like the internet, like interactions, right. comments, and messages and stuff like that on Instagram, Facebook, and then you finally meet them and you're like, I feel like I met you before. Like, how I have not met you before? Hmm. And you see a lot of that this weekend, especially at the Blading yep. Cup. Totally. Yep. Yeah, know, a lot of that. know people before you meet them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, people. There's tons of bad stuff about social media, but that's one of the good things. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a conversation starter. Totally. It is. Yeah. That's funny you said yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said you started, he, Billy finally started following you on Instagram. And finally, like, I can't believe that. I can't believe <laughs> I'm believe that. shocked. That's weird. Your That's audience, what, homie Bill just started following me. I'm shocked. I remember I'm like. very happy. Do you remember? My favorite new followers. Do you remember our first interaction on <laughs> social media? Huh? Do you remember our first interaction on social media? 
No. Oh, man. This is, this is going to be good. Oh, man. <laughs> so I guess the video groove Instagram just started, maybe. And I started seeing, like, in my, like, the Explorer page, like, the feeds of, like, you were posting clips, like, video groove classic clips, mm -hmm. I guess. And I was like, oh, this is sick. I'm like, oh, there's a video groove Instagram. That's sick. Let me follow it. So I follow it. And then, like, a few hours later, like, the next day, I get a DM from video groove. And I open it up. We have never spoken before, I don't think, before this or anything or met or whatever. I open up the video groove DM. It's like, about time you started following me. <laughs> that was the first line that you said to me. Not like, yo, what yeah, up? I've been no. following him for a while. <laughs> Uh, about yeah, time. yeah. Pull it together. He's like, who's this reggae rover following yeah, me? Who, oh, video group? Yeah, that, that's probably what it was, yeah. you know? But that's like, that's so you. That was the first line you said to me. Yeah, straight up. Right not, in. Yeah, in straight up. Yeah, right, right in. the deal, man? Yeah, about time I'm you started upset. following me. I'm, I'm mad. <laughs> cool. You need to cool my jets. Yeah. I'm not feeling the love. <laughs> um, Wow, man. Uh, uh, awesome. Yeah. We should tell him the J&J &J story one day. I gotta hear the J. J, &J for, we worked together. Oh, also, yeah. I worked. I had. Him, I hired him to be a cameraman for like stupid corporate. Uh, really? Thing. Yeah. He's good, he's good at the camera. He's good. He knows at the stuff. He's he good at the stuff. camera. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were just we were just talking before about mm -hmm. uh, how you doing soft goods. So we're VG's doing some stuff. Steve again. Johns uh, out of Huntington Beach, California, tattoo artist okay. and graphic designer, and just T Dog from back in the day. Mm -hmm. He'd say that himself. T Dog. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> shred the thread. Is he just came up to me one day? He's like, yeah, let's just let's just do swag. People want to have VG shirts, and we'll do fun stuff on the, on your IG. And I'm like, cool, let's do it. Like I, I'm like, listen. As long as it doesn't cost anything, we can just do it. And people want it. people want to buy it. It's fine. So we just started doing it a couple years ago and started messing with it. It's a nice way to keep the name going, have a little fun with it, maybe do some new things. But it's yeah. not only that. You're going you're gonna to be filming stuff. Too. Yeah. What, what's that? Well, I, I'm going to try and start getting this section going. There's two things. One I started already called, like, Your VG Story. Like, when you first connected with VG, I started with this kid who was um, – that's a, a great DJ idea. And then, yeah, he already, we did the first one already. Um, but I want to do this thing called 59 Seconds, which, you know, when Instagram first was only allowed to have video up, it was only supposed to be a, a minute max. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and do, like, little 59-second parts where, like, mini views or just, mm -hmm. like, you know, go go film with John Fromm for a week and mm -hmm. bust out a section with him. Uh, I'm trying to get <laughs> trying to get my boy uh, to do one. Like, there's Europeans that are in town this week. Maybe try and start with one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, get Justin. Justin's like, if I can wrangle him in, yeah. it'd be great to do him. You know, but... Get it going. Just start doing stuff and That's awesome, keep man. it going because. And you're gonna be filming it and editing it. Yeah, oh, people are so yeah. hyped on so, that. So, so people, oh, yeah. so people are gonna oh, be yeah. able to be filmed by the iconic Dave. <laughs> yes. Still. yes. Well, John, thank There's God, still John an opportunity lets me out there. Him. <laughs> I'm not that rusty, and I do film for my other company. So nice. Uh, the ru the rust is not. It's, it's just different. It's just mm -hmm. different. You know, like um, I, I miss it. I miss it. That's well, so true. Most of the edit you made recently, the the BFL edit. And like, I want to hear the background for that because I think that's an interesting story about what you guys have going on with your football mm -hmm. league and yep. what was the, on the John what Julio, was on the line for that. John Julio organized a uh, blading fantasy football league called the BFL with such heavy hitters as um, What's Adam the Johnson, Drew Backrack, Corey Casey, Arlo Eisenberg, Jason Reyna, um, Daniel Kinney, Sneak. I'm, I'm probably missing one Tory. I'm gonna get Matt Tory. I'm sorry, Tory. Sorry, Tory. Michael Pollack. That's everybody. <laughs> nice. I guess everybody. So um, it's amazing. It's like having brothers. We're on constant text thread every day on our t on our phones. All star. It's like yeah. it's like yeah. shit talking extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes work goes overboard. Me equally being guilty for taking it too far sometimes. But there's always apologies and love there. Yeah. But it's all about competition with fantasy football but the bets are always skating bets okay so i'm playing you this week's side bet 450 if you don't make it or a bottle of whiskey or you owe me section but it gets to the part where i think three years ago if you lost the league you'd have to do a full skate at it at least eight <laughs> to ten tricks right Whoa. and i'm the oldest one in the league by at least nine years so mm -hmm. when i lost in 2017 <laughs> I mean, I'm one of the biggest crap talkers on text, <laughs> and probably the most sensitive one too. Yeah. <laughs> and I lost, so it was a field day. Like, oh, pain, the old man. I cannot wait to see this section. <laughs> like, you were, oh, why? where's your section? Like, yeah. all the time. So I started filming it. Uh, I remember being up in LA with Drew. I was like, this third day filming. I think I just like fakey cab, or cab, fake 360 mm -hmm. off a of stage, and I just landed twisted, back spasms. Uh. I was out for like eight weeks, nine weeks, but I, I would have missed the deadline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to pay extra dues, and I had, to, <laughs> but I ended up winning the league the next year. So I turned in my edit right before the night of the draft, and everyone was psyched, and it was like uh, it I was turned like in a my edit. Oh, so <laughs> I did it. Yeah, I came through two Dang. years later. 
Uh, I did it, but yeah, I, I went for it. Like I definitely tried my hardest and nice, tried to man. tried to bust my butt to get it done. Nice. Is that the first section of yourself? I yeah. I don't so think anyone's seen a section. It was of a blessing in disguise. Online, right? It was a blessing in disguise. Then it was. It was definitely something I would. I wanted to do. I was happy to do. Like bucket yeah. list. Now I'm like, I want to do one for 50 years old. Hmm. That'll be it. Dang, you had a 51 would be line, good. Huh? Yeah, three lines wow. in a gap. Got the cover. Mm -hmm. Wow. I didn't want the cover. They showed me the cover photo. And I'm like, do not give me the cover. <laughs> Why? Because I, I just moved out. I was like, I I'm running the video magazine. I don't want to mm -hmm. be on the cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, no, we gave, we showed this to like 10, 20 people. Like they all picked your photo. Oh shit. I was like, okay. I don't think I've ever had anybody. Look, it's gonna look bad. I didn't want it to look bad. Like. Everyone's going to think you just gave it to me because yeah. I'm your new boy. Yeah. I just moved out here to do video yeah. groove. You know, I was like trying to, I was in a whole new West Coast. Like I was, didn't want that to be like the first thing that people thought. You know? I don't think anyone ever goes, please, no, don't put me on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> there was a whole other story yeah. tied to it. Yeah. 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 yeah it's crazy, man. Yeah. Wow. What a ride. But you never finished the Carlos story. Which, which story? I don't know, the BG20 thing. Oh, yeah. Like, well, I'm sorry. Let's okay. get back to that. Reset. Why do we, we get we, down that shit? I don't know, but it was fun. Okay. Was fun so, FID <laughs> tour. That's what it was. Yeah. FID. Um, we were shooting around because Tom was nearby. Uh, Kevin Dowling was he's like, he's like amazing to go out mm. on shoots with because oh, he's yeah. got energy mm. and yeah, like yeah. kind of keeps everyone going. Andy Cruz, Carlos, the Razor Twins, mm -hmm. I think were there that day. That's pretty much some of the key players. Uh, but as everyone knows, like Andy Cruz and Kevin were down there with the factory worker guy who popped out. So hmm. we had spotted the spot. I can't remember who had spotted the spot, but Carlos was like. It's like across from Skate Pile. Yes, it's across from Skate Pile yeah. from that business complex yeah. across from over there. It was like on one of the turnoffs yeah. right over there. Just it's literally within sight yeah. of Skate Pile. Mm -hmm. And I think it had been, been talked about during the day. And I'm like, and I kind of, we had huddled up with everybody. I'm like, all right, we're going to do this. This is how it's going to go down. Like, <laughs> you got to have somebody here, somebody across the street. Oh, and I'm sorry. One of the photographers from Atlanta was there, too, take, who took the photo. Braden, no? No, it wasn't Braden. It was um, the next generation of photographer. He's a really good photographer. Jarrah? Yeah. 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 Okay. Jarrah Jara was there taking the, he's the one who gave us the poster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was a very key, key person to have there. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, so I think Carlos maybe got about five to seven tries on it before the dude came out. And how do you get five to seven? Tries I was gonna say like I was that. thinking yeah. that same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Like and you after don't one or two tries. You can't like, think that's of it until you actually see it. Like till how you see how he runs down through the stairs or it mm. grabs the rail and yeah. slides as the are banging down yeah, the yeah. stairs. Yeah. Probably mad loud. Yeah. Yeah. And he like. Uh, but it was it, it wasn't that many tries. Like the dude came out and there was some obviously it was a commotion yelling mm -hmm. back and forth that only went for about a minute or two. And Carlos, you can feel Carlos. Carlos was setting the tone. He's like. Oh, do it like yeah. he's up there yelling at him. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it. So we're feeding off that adrenaline, right. <laughs> and Kevin yeah. and Andy, everyone. It, it just becomes animal tribal instinct yeah. to protect your tribe. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's just and like, uh, and uh, the uh, one uh, dude comes in lumbering and uh, initiates contact. And the last thing you want to do is initiate contact with us in that situation. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because you're gonna you got Andy and Kevin Rolling deep too. Yeah, Andy's not afraid. Just mm -hmm. flying. To yeah, just flying off a. He went middle blocker. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> just, just WWFing it down there at the bottom of the rail till yeah. we can get the shot. And yeah, so Carlos got it. Um, and he got it within two tries. Yeah, right then I think he did one where he kind of got out, but then he like. He did it, mm. and it was like the, that dash. Man, that, the the, the was hype like, was crazy. We, nothing happened. You chopped it up so well too, like the back and forth between Carlos, like hitting his head on the top of the rail to like Andy on the bottom fighting the guy. It was it was so sick. The way it was I'm shot glad together. you brought that up because those special edits, those times that people talk about in VG, like oh, those special editing moments mm. or something, a scene that's cut like that. Mm. Yeah, you know, you probably you guys all know it's like we're all creative. Like when you're creating a song or you're in that moment yeah. like there's two three hours where everything's just is working mm -hmm. yeah. right? and you're feeling you know what you want to do and you're trying to get it there yeah yeah and no, that's, that's, that's that was that one was of those it. ending moments like where you're in you're like yeah no that's totally one of those i know what i want to do yeah, yeah. Th those are one of those moments that i edited that comes across like when you're watching it like you f you can feel it like, that was the like, intent yeah i like you, f you feel like you're almost there like yeah you get yeah. it like how do i cut this you know yeah. what's happening yeah, yeah. So how do that, i cut this yeah that is a lot of people don't understand like the work behind that that's like great work and great that thank you because that could have been shown in so many yeah, other definitely. ways that mm -hmm. were impactful. We hope that VG, those were the kind of things that would separate us from just, you know, I'm, I don't want to disrespect anybody who yeah. does mm -hmm. any, I, I put, I give everyone respect who tries to put themselves out there, yeah. but just a cut above. Totally. Mm -hmm. You know, 
and, and, that, and, it, and it showed. It definitely yeah. showed. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, the, the work and the effort showed. I was just thinking, like, right now, just, like, even talking to you in the midst of all this, like, thinking about, like, how many memorable, exp- memorable experiences you must have had whilst making the VG. Like, you know, the injury. Like, you know, I'm thinking about um, Charles Dunkel's fall. You, we, did you film that? Yeah. Like, Char- Charles Dunkel's fall. Yeah. And, uh, and then I'm thinking about, you know, Chris Haffey's VG20 part, you know, which was just, like, at the mm. time, like, just groundbreaking mm-hmm. skating and, and just that stuff. So like, what are some of your most? I mean, it's it's probably like impossible to even ask. Yeah, you question. kind of mentioned it before. You but when I fe- when we talked about the Carlos thing in the beginning, you were like, there's like probably like ten or so uh, like those moments in video groove. Like, what was part of that list? I, I'll put it, okay, I'll put another one up there that yeah. was an, um, not dangerous, but it was amazing and kind of groundbreaking. Was John Julio at VG four at the Hubbard's Hideout mm. with the lines pro skateboarders? Yeah, who introduced him? His section in this is John Julio. Those that was a pro skateboarder. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. even know that. It was just kind of like this meeting of like, in San Francisco, it's a very progressive, it's very like open, free thinking mm-hmm. city. Great city. Mm-hmm. Um, my, one of my favorite cities on the West Coast. Um, it's weird that they have like the skateboarding culture that hates on blading so yes. much in that. It's so yes. strange. Mm-hmm. It's so like, strange. It's like the hardest, hard, <laughs> most hardcore blade hating that. place. I know. That in San Diego. Yeah. But it's like weird that San Francisco based on how San Francisco yeah. is that it's like that. Yeah. yeah. And I remember, and that's what I love, that's what I kind of love about it. It's punk rock about rollerblading. It's like, mm-hmm. I, we were at the forefront of going up there. And that was, the, okay, that part was great because it was like the first time that like we were in front of big time pro skateboarders walked right up mm-hmm. and just did our thing. Oh, like, I'd say. Yeah. Walked right up and just like, yo, we got to earn we're gonna go right to Hubbard's High Out. Me and John like talked about, talked about it ahead of time. We're gonna go right there. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do your thing. Like we're the first ones really. Oh, you there. like joined in their session, kind of. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I remember I did that in. Well, I, when I, personally, I love Park. I did that mm-hmm. with my brother Rob. I was like the first roller bear to skate. Love Park. I had like mm-hmm. frontside handrail just to like go skate there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what made me think of the um, the other thing was Escondido. I remember being with Bo. I think we're filming Louis' part in VG14. Mm-hmm. Um, Big time skateboarders were skating the big three down there at, uh, at that where the IMYT was. Yeah, that yeah, school. yeah. The, the, the big three. Yeah. yeah, and we walk rocked up, and we were in a crew like 30, 35. Like that day, mm. it was like Heiser was in town. Uh, you oh, see yeah, the footage. Yeah. They're all it's mic'd up. Yeah. Remember, it's all yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're like commentating the German judge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. We we when we walked up. They were having a big session. We walked right in the middle of that. And everyone, we started skating, and they just sat down and watched. Hmm. No. I mean, it was like big session versus big session. We just walked up, started skating with them. And there was like 10 minutes where we were skating together. And then they just got on their boards and sat and stayed and watched. Oh, like, they were like back further. You couldn't see in the footage. But, hmm. uh, yeah, they were all just sat there and watched. That's sick. Yeah, man. it was totally sick. And it's just like, dude, we, I always knew we belong. But it's hmm. like, come on. Like people think about all these people. These people just think about old They just think about this one thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like that. And then when they mm. see it, and I, I saw this all the time at Phil TV. Like we'd, I'd be traveling with like Travis Rice and Mark Frank Montoya, like best snowboarders in the world, or surfers. And then we'd sit down and show them a section, or they would. Sometimes they get to know you so well, like they like me, and they'd be like, "Yo, I watch one of your VG things," and they look around and they'd be <laughs> like. Yo, it's really cool. Like, <laughs> what, if, no what if you way. did this? You know, they, uh, they talk to you in private, like, uh, you know, like, you know, and you're like, you realize. They had a look, look around. Yeah, like, they're like, you're selling drugs to them, you know, like, yeah. but they don't want other people to hear because everyone's yeah. so worried about what other people think. Right. But, like, you know, like, that's the truth, you know, yeah. like, role playing is the truth. Like, mm-hmm. you do it, you're good at anything you do, it's respect. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's so real just thinking about, like, that at the, at the, at the Fuel TV, like, your experience there because you got. On one side, people on the on the rollerblades being like, "Oh, well, you're you're a trader, you're selling this that," and then people are there like you're saying you're a rollerblader too, and like, "Oh, this guy's a rollerblader." So yeah. you kind of get it from both ends. Yep, there I too. do. Yeah, I get crap from my own. But like yeah. again, I've got a lot of friends who never did that. You I'm know, sure you guys. No, no, it's not. None of my close friends who really know me. No, it's not. Yeah. Every, of mm-hmm. course, but it's just. Yeah. And I'm sure it's not everyone on the, on that side too. Like, and I know, tell the story just who, for experience for other people that have to go through it. You know, yeah. like how you deal with it, how to just be like. Just roll with it, like mm-hmm. you know. You the bigger you get, the more exposure you get. The people are gonna, everyone's gonna have an opinion, right? Yeah. Just, right. just take it as yeah, everyone's mm-hmm. gonna have an opinion. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, I'm sorry, just like just to clarify yeah. the um, but the moment you're talking about with John at Hub Side Out, like with the pro skateboarders, like yeah. So that was like you're saying, like that was like a moment where you got there, and it was like the first time you were like, no, I don't know, like what, how do you? It's it's not like it's like we're looking for a stamp of approval, yeah. But it's just like, yo, these are streets too, but we're the new kids on the block. Yeah. It's like you know, we're Sick. we're gonna come to like the most known place, and it's almost mm-hmm. like you you have to pay Word, your dues, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how about that? Was the start of it. That was the start of it, I guess. Right? Yeah, 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 pay your dues. <laughs> pay your dues. Yeah. <laughs> 
So you're a guy who takes a lot of pride in everything he does, clearly. Yeah. There's like, if somebody were to ask you about the Video Groove series, it's like someone you met now, and you're like, yeah, I did the skate series, you know, rollerblading series mm-hmm. back in the day. Like, what one issue would you show them that you would be, like, most proud about? That's a good question. That's, that's a new way to ask a very good, like, question that I get asked a lot. Mm-hmm. I oh, okay. appreciate the way you cry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, if I would show him one, I'd show him VG20. I'd show him what? Chris Haffey's section, mm-hmm. VG20. Straight up, just Haffey's section. Right? And, that's, and that's what I do. People yeah. ask me mm-hmm. those stories I just told you. Mm-hmm. That's the first edit I show them. That was a big one, man. man. Dude, that one just reminds me. It's just, again, a special edit. We The work you put and, into it, like it was just more than a And Chris, too. Yeah, like yeah. Chris gets all of the credit to me because we were, it was like science. Yeah. Like we would put shots in with the music, like. And, have, and he's he's a very particular like I am, mm-hmm. and uh, Rob Guerrero we did a lot, a lot of that in his section oh, too. Oh man, I love that. When part. we did the three for three like seven times, um, Chris was like, we did sign off on every trick and we would move things around like chess pieces and we were like, the music had to hit the trick. Sometimes we would go film a trick just like we no. looked at balance of the edit, like what do you want? Like you to already prove. had the song. But yeah, the we had laid out. We were like literally filling in tricks no. as we were going. Like that's what? not. I've never been so in depth. Oh, and I've had things Whoa. that have been placed that's in That's work, positions. man. Yeah. It that's was good It work. was like, yeah. yeah. And I had like Bo and Brandon and people who had filmed in the section come in and sign off on it too. Like I wanted to make sure everyone, it was official. Like, wow. Damn. Official. Like I wanted everyone who was a part of it to sign off on it. Carl, I think, was part of the filming too. Yeah, it was. And like, where did the, I mean, obviously because he was such a special skater and still is. Yes. I mean, but at that time, like it was. He was obviously just coming, you know, arriving, uh, yeah, as you would say. But, I mean, um, Thank God what was the concept, it. like, that, what, what was the idea that gave you the concept yeah. of letting him talk? Because that was a very unique bit of the section. Mm. Like, you know, like, you had him go to the desk and, like, black and white, very, Look you at know, you guys. That's another yeah. great back-to-back follow-up question. Yeah. <laughs> no, because his personality. I was like, how yeah. am I going to get Chris? That's, how yeah. am I going to get Chris to talk, first of all? <laughs> how am I going to get Chris to talk? Right. It's, Quiet it's guy. So that, I'm like, if I can walk away, first of all, you know, I can have him do the VO by himself in the bathroom going to get this hollow feel mm. to it you know inside his brain and thinking inside his own head mm. but so we all we all can hear it and then dub it lay it over a little bit mm. and then and then then from that that gave me the idea of having him sitting at a table by himself writing his thoughts because that would get me from his thoughts to his brain mm-hmm. to have him do the vo to voice it so you can get the whole effect mm. oh, so that was like that and was the rewinds it. and the throwing the paper yeah, and, the, the and, and, the and i was yeah. shooting like some music videos with andy mm. Cadoo and nick Rail when we were using that that nd filter flash pop yeah yeah the natural effect of the light yeah. so we, we use that as our like our hard cuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was like a real thing that you had him do, just write yep. it down. Like that wasn't like just part of like yep. the looks, the like aesthetic or whatever. Yep. We had him record it first because then we knew what was the good juicy stuff. And then we went and wrote some of the stuff on the paper uh, that was going to reflect okay. what, he, what he said. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That was incredible. And he, and Chris, when I told him the concept, like it was cool because like he's so introspective and he completely, he was like so fast to get it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think his mind is unique. And how he gets from point A to point B. I think everyone who skates at a high level has that ability, but some people like Chris have a, a unique other level. Did that interview that come? yeah comes comes across in skating and yeah. how he does that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I mean that that, part, that yeah, I'm not, not sorry, not uh, but uh, that part there and like how that was done with knowing how Chris is. That just like elevated, I think, what, what, whatever there can be of this in rollerblading, but it, it elevated his star status so much because it got you, it made more than just like the skater. It was like, yo, this is, this is a deep dude, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, whoa, like he's, he's teaching something right here. Like, hold on, listen, like, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't just like, you know, the normal skate vibe. So yeah. that, that was a really special, special part. Thanks. Yeah. And I, I, I try not to like think of stuff ahead of time for him. Like I, I wait till I'm like spend quality time for a while until I feel like. It'll come. For like the theme of the profile? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna Some people it. I might already know and have because of <clears throat> right. maybe proximity or how much shoots we've been doing together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask if that interview became before or after shooting the skating. Uh, I, of, yeah, pretty much near the end. It was in those final stages where we're filling holes yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. That would make more sense, I guess. Because coming to a deadline on VG is so crazy because you're holding stuff over that doesn't need to get in or sections that are already done. Mm. But in the beginning... In the, the intro and the forward are always being worked on sometimes profiles at the end. Those are the last pieces to go in mm-hmm. and the ad. So it's like mm. all these little things are just getting done. It's like almost like coming to press or yeah. going to, mm. you know, like you're just putting in the final things. It's, it's exciting every time. Yeah. Mm. And you get done, you're like, I was talking to Julio last night at the bar and he's like, I look at him and he's got that look we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah, totally. like, what are you, you going to do? He's like, 
I'm going on vacation. <laughs> I'm like, you need one. Yeah. And, and that's why I felt after VG, I'd be like, but it only lasts for like three days. I was going to say, like, <laughs> and then I'd be like, let's go. I, like, something would happen, mm-hmm. just get me excited. How long could it be until the next one starts? Are you already like, oh, you're already going. You're already looking at like, one. You take like, a sigh release, you take a, a brief moment to appreciate the issue uh-huh. getting, getting done, and you're already starting to shoot for the next one. You're already yeah. like, start thinking of the profiles, and, and that's cool. It's like, it's like coming up with the next ideas. I'm sure it's like nonstop. It's just like more checkpoints, if anything, because yeah. you're constantly going the whole time. Yes. So there's yes. a checkpoint, like, okay, finish this. Let's just start the next one now. I mean, remember, at Full Tilt, we're doing at least two big VGs a year. We're doing mm-hmm. a Colony of Summer, mm-hmm. and I'm doing it's some, at least an IYT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ECVG, Some, you know, yeah. back to back on with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the end, was it like hard to close the doors? Did it hurt? Was it was it was it like a tough decision? I still haven't closed the doors, and it still hurts. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding it's me? I, 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 I suck at the, every ounce of chance I get to be around rollerblading. Mm-hmm. And th- again, thank gosh for great events that we have still, and the people yeah. that are in rollerblading, mm-hmm. so I can come and be here mm-hmm. and fulfill that need. Mm-hmm. Like I need it. You know, I don't. Totally. You know, I and, and it still hurts. Yeah, I like. Kids come to me all the time, like, man, bring VG back. Uh, yeah. It's like, feels great. But, it's all, but I'm also like, yeah, I want to. Yeah. But I, I need to, like, pay the bills and run my own production company that I'm still trying to get off the ground. And I'm VG 24 and 2024. I know. That's it. There we go. Right. Yeah, 20. We got to wait a while. Put it out in the universe. <laughs> I'm a while for that. Put it out in the universe. No, but you're so. doing the. the yeah, we were talking about 59 thing. seconds. We're going to try and start that. And yeah. I am VG stories. Just people awesome. writing in, telling their own things. Like, I'll hit people up like you. Like, hey, yo, Billy, do do this for me. When was the first time? Like, what, what it mean to you? <laughs> Just little as portrait stories. Um, Austin and I have a secret idea we've talked about years ago that we want to do together, but I'm not going to release that. Remember okay. the photo combo video idea we talked about? No, I don't remember. No, on, the, <laughs> on the Johnson and Johnson shoot, I'll remind you later. Yeah, remind me. That's that. a development. Yeah, okay. But I have talked to whatever it is. I want to work on it. Yes. <laughs> no, it's a totally unique thing. It's cool. Yeah. It's like different than all three of these things. So uh-huh. 59 seconds okay. on VGIG. I want to start and just do it when I can. Just mm-hmm. a great fun thing. And then uh, I want to, in a couple years, I want to organize this feature like rollerblading film with like my favorite cinematographers and rollerblading ever. And the concept is like, it's easy because it's, it's a global project like Dom West, Vinnie Mitten, like, you know, guys who film rollerblading in motion, like mm-hmm. movement mm-hmm. and are cinematic with how they shoot, you know, Sarah Darenforth, you know, um, it's, it, the list is not completed, but there's like, everyone's going to have a certain task and it's going to like be a VG project, but I want it to be like 16 by nine, like cinematic short. You know, like you got a lot going on up here still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's like I want to present everyone's current cinematic abilities, Mm -hmm. reflecting with the most current skaters. Mm -hmm. Like I want it to be new. Mm -hmm. I want to be like VG in the present, and Mm -hmm. like I want to be able to to show everyone's abilities that they've learned. Like Vinny Mitten and Dom, like their cinematography. Like Connor O'Brien. Yeah, like he's a he's a professional DP. Yeah. Yeah, like look at look at like. Brian Kanowski, Dave Jeff Lang. Stockwell, uh, Brian Bowen Smith, Dave Lang. Dave Lang. Dave Lang is a great example. He, he's have, like Dave Lang he's is on that list. Two and three. Like yeah. Dave Lang is mm-hmm. on that list yeah. to shoot mm-hmm. with on this thing. Like mm-hmm. he's a pr- another great example of the Vinnie Man, the Doms. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Like they're, we're all gonna get on this big global call. I'm gonna tell them what to do with the concept is, and mm-hmm. like I've already talked to like half of them. That it's on. Mm-hmm. Like I just want music composed. Like I, we have so many amazing people who can be part of the project. Like I just. I just want to do it. I won't. It won't be done until it's done right. So, and I think we can do it. So that's totally. that's something I want to do in that's the next awesome. couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like I like that you're still like active and wanting to do things with blading because, unlike the people who I guess when you went to Fuel TV were saying like your yeah. trader like you you know what they think but you don't owe anything to blading. <laughs> you, there, there's no. You know, you don't have to do anything. No, it's an opportunity. You could just come out if you even even if you didn't want to, but you could just if you wanted to see friends, you could come out to the Blade Cup. Yeah. Hey mm-hmm. man, what's up? See friends, grab a beer, and yeah. then do it again next year. But yeah. you still want to do things. I I think that's it, cool, man. It's because of how much I, I love it and how much how big part of my life it was, mm-hmm. and the legacy that is still going on thanks mm-hmm. to you there guys like you thing. and John and mm-hmm. everybody who does anything in media or our event or is skating themselves mm-hmm. and just pushing it forward in their own way. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. It's cool to see it still very strong. Yeah, well, well you've created a hell of a legacy, man. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely. like the it's like uh, you know they call Thrasher the Bible, like Bla- VG and Daily Bread was the Bible. Yeah. Like for for shout, for shout out to Life Plus. 
Shout out to Life Plus too. Yeah, shout Box. out to Life Plus too. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, but I mean, just like yeah. you know, I'm t- even before that, you know, in the VHS stage, when like we were like looking to see what was new before the internet, mm-hmm. like you know, mm-hmm. when we were just like go to look to like see what was new. That's like the, uh, the newspaper, you know. Yeah. It was the, it was the blading for a long time. It held us. You held know, us all you know they brought up the, uh, in in the crowd of conversations the mini mag uh, this weekend. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I forget. Mini mag. Yeah. VG four mini mag. VG four and VG five. Yeah. With the only two that had that. Uh-huh. Correct. Oh, slap. VG6? Yeah, I think VG6 did too. Did it? Toys? I think it did too. Yeah. Why those stop? Huh? Why did those stop? I think it was just production. It was just too much, actually. Yeah, it took, it took so much time. It yeah. Like we were Print is like a lot. lot. It's like a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I saw my VG5 mini mag. Do you remember that at all? Like VG4, 5, and 6, I guess, yeah. all came with like a little booklet. Mini magazine of like remember. the video. Yeah, mm-hmm. I still have my VG because VG5 was the first video I ever had. I had oh. like the VG5 booklet still. Sorry, just to cap that one last thought. Um, the All the stuff I've learned in production since video groove from fuel tv to storytelling at fuel tv and all the action sports filming but in the commercial work i've been doing in my own company like and what dom has been doing and Vinny and all these guys dave like we've all learned so much in our professional careers like mm-hmm. i want to apply that and give that back to role wedding you know what i mean saying like everyone's like ah bring back bg like make it like this i'm like mm-hmm. no man i want to like i want to like give back all these years like we've evolved since then mm-hmm. like our skills have evolved like we want i want to give that back to role wedding totally like i want to give it a new look so like this high high yeah. production value look like we've learned I have the resources yeah, Tom West me man Tom West's work is yeah, yeah like yeah. he does commercial work like I do like yep. like totally. a campsite TV like we we're like five years in like we just, I'm so proud like I'm sorry we just won a bunch of awards this week and yeah I'm like super proud oh, of that nice work. but I want to yeah. use those things we learned in, in the work that I do in my day to day job like mm-hmm. for rollerblading that's incredible so, yeah man I want to see what that looks like. That's you're, what I'm excited about. You're a high energy dude. I am a high energy dude. Yeah. Yeah. What as is, tired as we are. Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> that, is that the Philly in you? What is that? No. I, yeah, maybe. I, I, I just think it's me. I just think, um, you know, I, we're all born with a certain magic. Yeah. Whatever that may be. And just part of, I just part, I, I've, yeah. I, I, love, hear, I hear that a lot. Yeah. I love the, I love the passion. I love that you're still doing it. I love the passion. We're going to eventually. Cause I, cause like we could sit here. You have so many stories, dude. We can go through this yeah. for like forever and ever. Can and I ask we're, we're we're st- we're, no, we're still, we're, we're not going to do <laughs> it right <laughs> now, but we will we're eventually. Going, we're going to request request vodka. I yeah. mean, water. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely <laughs> vodka. Um, we're going to get to questions because I know there's a ton of people watching right now who have a ton of questions for you and we, and we don't want to like completely crush you cool. uh, for the whole night. With no, we're stuff. crushing. This but, but, feels like it's taking him. five minutes. Yeah. We're crushing. Okay, awesome. Then we're I'm having a great time. Then we're yeah. But, yeah, but if, uh, if anyone who's watching now wants to just start loading up on questions, yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. But uh, I know we also had, yeah, no, uh, cause we were just talking about like VG in the current era pretty much now, like VG 2019, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. It, there you go. <laughs> if like, if, VG was ha- VG24 was happening. If you were filming for VG24 right now in this modern day and age, what what like tours would be on it? Who would you want a profile on? Who who like what would the oh, theme be? Gosh, that is like oh, wow. picking have, from fantasy like, football VG. Yeah, it's like the, fantasy football. Yeah, VG. yeah, there you go. I you should have given me that one for homework, man. Because <laughs> I a lot of spot. Because I follow spot. skating. Yeah, I know you do. That's why like you're still so involved. You know, you still know so much. You know uh, as much as all of us. Okay. Yeah. But, but before you get to that, because that's like mapping okay. out an issue right okay. here on the spot. Before you get to that, because I have some people have known. because that's such a deep one. But before you get to that. I, I think I have a simpler one. I think, and it might not be. <laughs> but uh, is there a part Alex that Brosco, you never proper profile? Yeah, I was gonna oh. say. Is there a part that you never got to, that that or, you know that you wanted to do out of mm-hmm. the VG thing? Something that you like? Duh, I wish I would have done that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, Alex. Alex. For the, sure. The mini view wasn't enough. Alex like, never got a VG profile. That was a mini view. Yeah. yeah that sounds right. like a slap in the face. But it was a time. It was a timing, timing what thing. Was that VG sixteen? Sixteen, yeah. 16, right. Yeah. 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 That was good. That was good. To have that. It was like mm. powerful. Many of you. Yeah. Alex Brasco yeah. never yeah. got a VG. Yeah. I got that. Yeah. No, but like Alex getting now, mm. like is very intriguing. Oh yeah, yeah. He's. Uh, I think we were talking. Uh, you guys might have been in the conversation. We we're talking about like he's the closest thing to and is, and is his own thing in his own right like him and Dustin how particular they are with how they skate like they're Dustin who? Latimer Dustin Latimer you know their style oh yeah you know I know Dustin's style is different than Alex's but the way how particular they are about the two feet you know mm-hmm. how, how they use them as instruments mm-hmm. totally you know mm-hmm. to make statement mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. almost the antithesis of Eric Burke how he would use mm-hmm. the one foot ski out and only he can get away with it mm-hmm. people used to think that that was 
something you, everyone can get away with. No, hmm. that was a misnomer of, of VG. If it was in VG, oh, it's okay. No, you're not thinking second level. It's because it's Eric Burke. Yeah. Style note, everybody. Jeez. Okay, man. Yeah. Intense. But yeah, I would, so, I would ugh, so dive into Alex would be. Alex, yeah, yeah, so, Alex so, have a profile so, on VG24. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you would be so honored. If you would want yeah. to. Yeah, it would be so yeah. honored. I, 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 yeah, I felt like that one might be before getting to yours. Like no, yeah. maybe, maybe a quick one. Like a yeah. Quick, like, but yeah, to go back to oh my God, Austin's yeah. point, that's yeah. probably a. Because he's, yeah. you know, he's just like so mature in his skating and so in that mm-hmm. that part of his skating. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he's just so cre- so creative and powerful still. Like I, but I would still push him to to say, I think you need to hit some power up in this bitch. Mm-hmm. Like you need to get it on some of the big stuff as well, because mm-hmm. it would just make your other stuff you do that much more important. That's real. Yeah, so, it is. Yeah, I can see. I, I, yeah, Al, yeah, Alex with like the Chris Huffy VG twenty parts. So yeah, yeah, something like that. that. Yeah, just, I feel the same way. The way and he's yeah, it's the same way I feel when I watch Chris K. Like when he lands, you're just like, mm, yeah. Mm. Mm. Damn! Like mm-hmm. yes, yeah. Like that is it. Chris was such a tough guy. His whole part was such a tough guy part. Yeah. <laughs> well, guy I mean, part. I'm talking to two guys who have great landings yeah. themselves. So mm-hmm. I'm talking to ah. an audience who understands like what I'm talking about. It's like you know, and understands that style is unique to each person. It doesn't mean totally. it's a, a rule that goes to everyone. no. Of yeah. course not. That's not how it is. Mm-hmm. It's not better or worse. It's like no. music. It's subjective. Subjective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct. Totally. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Just put it out there. Mm-hmm. See what happens. That's it. See who digs it. Some exactly. people might dig it. Some people put it won't. Out there. Yeah. It's like put yourself know? out there. Some people don't like Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. I don't get those people. I don't get them either. I don't understand don't how that's, that's a thing. <laughs> yep. I don't. That's know a why thing. That's really a thing. Yeah. But hey, I heard it. I don't know. I heard it's a thing. I have. Let me see. 17 BKS S best stories from filming with Louis and Walt. Oh, that Louis part too. That yeah, was that Louis part was one, one of the best ones. Louis, yeah. Made. Yeah. Louis, oh, probably filming with Louis. I, the best parts of filming probably with Louis is on the sunshine tour. Cause it was like Corey Donahoe, Josh Petty, Aaron Feinberg, Corey Donahoe, Louis, you brought it. My brother Rob, like it was. Rob like, was on that. Sunshine Rob Tour? was well, DJ on the on the first time. Oh, yeah. yeah, I had to film for him when he had to go film like DJ other dates. Yo, kids, this is back in the day when Blading Tours had a DJ on it. Like, a DJ, a DJ. They were like, all right, we got the we got the Bladers. All right, we need a DJ. We need a DJ. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I think just some of the stories with Louis in the back of the van with all those guys. I mean, it was. It was nonstop. Mm-hmm. It was nonstop. Like Louis and I spent so much time filming together from his profile. He was always around though. Like he would go yeah. on with me on, he'd be like one of those steady guys like Guerrero that would constantly take trips with me up to NorCal and back. Mm-hmm. Like we take those shoots. We go to San Diego and, and NorCal almost monthly. Cause like I, I, I felt it was my duty being in California and just getting this extra secret, amazing life at video groove instead of working for the man. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I took every opportunity to like, my job was to go out and film. Mm-hmm. Like go wherever I mean I could drive anywhere in California I wanted mm-hmm. to go, so I was like, yeah, yeah. Be like if I lived in the East Coast, I would be going to New York, just doing that yeah. Boston, New York, Philly, totally. DC yeah, yeah. swing the entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it was like. That's what California's like. San Diego to SF, and then you go, you want to go to Portland or wherever, but yeah, usually hop a flight from there. Totally. Yeah. So any any stories from there? I, I just thought of something by the way, real quick. I just remember. In VG7, when you had that East Coast part. I and, can't tell some stories. I and there, understand that. <laughs> in the VG7, there was an East Coast part. Mm-hmm. It was Boston, Philly, and D.C. <laughs> I was very upset New York wasn't in that. I just yes. wanted to let you know. Right, I you skipped heard, right over New York. Right? About that. Just skipped was, over New York. Yes, it's totally East over. Coast, man. <laughs> yes. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> no excuses. Just, let's just say there was an East Coast VG series. And we did get it done. And no, we had, had gotten it. Yeah, that was cool. That's what that's. Yeah. yeah. You got the didn't you get a little section? I, got, I didn't get a little section, but I had no. some tricks. There, oh, that was the biggest regret. I've told you that before. Yeah. Is I always wanted to do a section with him. Uh, uh, that would have been incredible. Yeah. You I, know what I think you would have said, to be honest? I think I told you that when we skated a couple years ago. I thought you would have said something like Shima, to be honest. You know? Shima's a good one. Shima's a great one. Because every, like, every, like, honestly, like, you kind of, like, bless people with the official, like, you're official now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't yeah. need to be if you blessed. Have a VG, yeah. If you have yeah. a VG part, yeah. like, it's oh, like, he's a great like one. Got, yeah. It's like you got knighted yeah. in the game. Like you're it's like getting a daily bread you're cover. That's like the thing for sure. No, yeah. he's a great one. Yeah. He, that just didn't come to the top of my head, but he, yeah, he's definitely one. Yeah. That way. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because it was like almost everyone that was official had one. Thank God I got yeah. to you know film what I mean? at the IMYTAs and be like just to be in his presence and see him skate. Like, 
I do get to see him skate a ton of contests and stuff, yeah. but mm. we just sometimes like, and it's crazy because I filmed a ton with Pat, mm-hmm. you know, Pat's, Pat and Brian are good friends. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But yeah, I just, I never got that. It's, it's weird because you can't, yeah, I know he's perfect. You can't get in all the no, time. No, no, right no, no, totally. But I'm just saying it's like, it's just like. Oh, a, it's a good one. I'm like it, regretting it, it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just a heck of like a, a feather in the cap for like a skater to have had a part mm, in a DJ. Right. Oh my God. So, so it was like. It's weird that I never oh, I feel that responsibility. Well, it, it's like, like, that's what I'm saying. Like you have such a responsibility. I was like yeah. almost everyone that was like legit, like, like not legit, that's but like everyone who was like the top, like almost everyone who was like the, the dudes had one. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Thank God for like, you know, the good videos on the course. Coast and those of guys start coming out with those uh, videos because you know, yeah, those, yeah, we would have never gotten no shine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was killer. Oh man. my gosh, I always, yeah, I always <laughs> regretted not having built, would love to have just lived on the East Coast for a year and done yeah. it right, like filmed everything. Yeah. Like, well, thank Chris, God, Magen, on, yeah, Magen yeah. helped out a lot, yeah, but like that. he still was doing his own videos too, and he did yeah. great, like get helped me get connected and stuff like that. But I, if you know, if you want to do something right, it would have been great to have just stationed myself for a year in the East Coast mm. and just shot all the time yeah. and just done it. Because imagine that. That's, you know, like these are things like I regret. You still got it yeah, done though. I wish yeah. I could have done. You still got it done though, and we appreciate it on yeah. the East Coast. I'll say that, man. We were so excited when uh, EC VG came out. That was Murderer. so sick. Yeah, that I mean, was so I, I, good. I, I, I don't know about the uh, EC VGs, but I know the, the the New York issue for Daily Bread was one of the top selling issues. Was it? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know about the New York's VGs, the hype. Yeah, but I know that that the New York issue, like mm-hmm. it was like the first New York issue that they had had, like. Ever legit, yeah, like, yeah, from, yeah. Like, and it was like uh, the new generation of New Yorkers, like you know, mm-hmm. like everyone knew Murda, Dustin mm-hmm. Franco, like, yeah, yeah. You know, Omar yeah. Morsi. Yeah, I was in there, and mm-hmm. uh, but like, yeah, that one, yeah, the Angel would say that one sold. I never knew that. Yeah. What was the best like made East Coast video you guys would say? Mm. East Coast, not New York. East yeah. Coast. <clears throat> oh, it could be New York too. Like, what's the number one New York? Dave turning the, the tables right now. Yeah, what yeah. is that? <laughs> it's what is natural. this? Like, I can't help it. It's just... uh, I do. I, I, I literally. Th- I mean. East Coast video or New York video? Give me both. Or give me one. It, honestly, like ECVG one or two. Was, really? I was going to say ECVG one, yeah. I think. Hear that? Hear that? I love, <laughs> I I love the ECVG I, one. I love two because uh, yeah, I like I, I'm, I'm, I'm big on those Atlanta guys. Uh-huh. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So like all that. Like, yeah. I mean, Walt's Walt like, Walt was my Dre, favorite skater. So Walt I obviously love that. Stuff, that was huge. That was good. Oh, man. Even like, that's the thing. Like, I think, uh, you know, to the videographers out there, take notes, maybe because those like. Making the parts more than skating, like mm-hmm. themed parts, like you know, mm-hmm. we were talking about what half we were talking about mm-hmm. with. Um, I was thinking about Dre's. Dre's part. when he, yeah, like the 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 three part. Thing. Uh, the uh, onslaught. Dre's the intro. The onslaught was, yeah, was so yeah. good. Yeah, that, that was, was a really, magic moment too. You really took the person, like the personality of the person, yeah. and then made a section that fit. And then, yeah, like, that seemed like it was one of those things. Do that. Do yeah. do that. Yeah. Do whoever's doing yeah. the secret. There, yeah, that sounded like it was one of those things where you were saying with like the Carlos thing, where you knew like the editing was exactly how you wanted it to be. Yeah. Like like Dre when you were filming him, like this is what it's going to be. Like I know yeah. this. Build I'm going to edit this way. You got to build the character. And don't yeah. settle. Like if it doesn't feel right, like you're just doing the section to do it. Like like don't yeah. settle. Like just if it frustrates you, it frustrates you until you get it. Like until you're like. But when you get it, it's worth it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do okay. Do you have any Do you have any like what What would be like your best piece of advice for like young videographers filming or coming up and uh, doing things who want to make an impact in skating? I yeah, I think some of the things we we're just talking about. That, that's that's kind of why I wanted to segue from that. But yeah, yeah if like, there's any more, like yeah. strive to make the other part of the videos that skating as best as it can be. Mm-hmm. Uh, also have your own take on what that is, and also. Like, yeah, put some craftsmanship into it. Have, mm-hmm. have some pride in, in the work. If you're going to do it and spend some time doing it, why not take the extra time to take it a little further? That's true. Don't half ass it. Put yeah. some care into it. That's right. That's it. Be about it. That's real. That's advice yeah. straight from the man. F-I-D. 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 <laughs> That's advice straight from the man. But I don't think you actually answered the, the man's question. I do, well, there's Did some movie stories I can't tell. At Walt, any? Walt? Walt was a pretty chill dude. Yeah, Walt's mm-hmm. Walt's so like, chill. yeah, he's just chill. He's just yeah. mellow. Walt's yeah. like you, man. Yeah. You, yeah. That, that's why it's like it's funny that it's the name. It's funny that like you're like one of his, it's the Austin. He's one of your favorite skaters I just, because you guys are okay. Very I like one. Okay. For Louis. All right, Louis this is Minnesota. <laughs> he was thinking hard that whole time. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I got some. There's a little. Cla- cla- Louis is classic funny. He's, he's a lot like oh, yeah. me when it comes to uh-huh. partying, uh-huh. and we'd like to mix it up. We'd like to be in the mix. You as well. I like to be in the mix. I feel like you, mm-hmm. you're very similar like that. We yeah. like to be part of the mix, be yeah. part of the fun. Yeah. Uh, he's very much like that. Yes. So we just mm-hmm. get along famously. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> as a part of the Sunshine Tour of year one, we, you know, we would send off hotels properly. And I remember one night, <laughs> and this is what started the Roman Candle Warfare. 
And this was, it was like uh, snowy. We, uh, we were getting in with all these crazy snowstorms and just getting to the events, getting done the demos. And I remember one night at the Minnesota Hotel, out in the back of the parking lot, we got all these fireworks from down south. And we just went up north. And we're like, let's go. <laughs> let's go in the back parking lot and have a, let's, let's tie up some tape on the Roman candles and let's get out there and have some Roman candle warfare. <laughs> Louie, freaking idiot that he was, he's like, Kid from California, San Diego, Escondido, doesn't have East Coast garb like we have. You know? He was like this cashmere sweater, like held <laughs> around it and everything. <laughs> we go out there, we have this great battle. And when we come back in, I remember running back in, his team's coming off us, it's dripping, it's coming down, it's like two, three feet. <laughs> I remember running in behind Louie, and I see Louie. It looks like Swiss cheese because he's got this like it's like vanilla color. And he's got this Roman candle holes in it everywhere. Oh my God. And his back was on. He has no idea. No. And he's talking to us all. And we're all just pissing our pants. No way. He's got smoke coming off him from the bottom no rocket. No way. Big holes, and it's smoking. It's hot because we're in the in the steaming. Hotel, you're sweating. Hotel, yeah. Sweating. Wow. And I remember and when he realized he took off his sweater. He was so upset. He was like. Ah. Damn it! I love this one. I'm saving it so I can go out and see some chicks. It was just that funny. No, he was having a meltdown on purpose for for our laughs. And I just remember just being like, that was. I remember always having. I mean, that was part of things just that bonded such us a laugh. All. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It broke down all this want to be too cool because everyone was the hype. Yeah, and like big names were on the tour, you know. Yeah, and it was just like the video magazine is doing a tour, like. It was on. That's sick. It was really fun. Yeah, yeah so. I, I don't know. You can get hit with like a Roman candle, candle, and just survive, yeah, not even notice. And survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're like, oh, I was like, exactly right. Running candles. the whole time, yeah. it just bounces. Yeah. <laughs> it just cashmere catches the singe. It's like, oh, it's like, it's yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like flint. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my god, that's so funny. That's yeah, that was, I remember that. that's. It just flashed into my head. I yeah. was like, okay, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing one, that one, man. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a great story, definitely. Uh, this has been asked before, but I feel like you're one of the probably better people to ask this question. Uh, Memory Camp asks, what's the craziest trick you saw in person since you filmed like all the best skaters pretty much? That's another great Whoa, question. That's it's like a going through question. a Rolodex. Oh yeah, I'm like, gosh. I was going to ask about like gnarliest injury, similar thing. Yeah, Charles Dunkel. I think it's a lot yeah, of the Dunkel yeah, injury. Yeah, I thought he was going to mm-hmm. die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the craziest one as far as someone I thought was going to die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Those sounds weren't good. Crazy what about trick. the complete opposite? Crazy trick that yeah. someone did land. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos is and the Carlos is I mean, Royal Royal. I mean that drop rail was insane. It's huge, insane. like thirty feet in the air. Yeah, it's like three stories. Yeah, we we were like so like nervous for another person yeah. while filming a trick that you were like sweating, yep. hands clammy, all yep. that kind of stuff. I was. I yeah. was, yeah. I can see that being one of those tricks. But Especially would, at that time. Yeah. Like, before any of those had been done. Like, it wasn't like, oh, Drop King Rails is a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was, like, the one who started that thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> there's there's tricks that flash in your head like, that was crazy. And it's funny, like, it's sick to say, but I get amped. Like, I almost get in the moment. Like, everything slows down and I get excited. Mm-hmm. And it's not a nervous. Yeah, exciting, yeah, 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 it's like, yeah. I almost get more in his zone to film it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you, there's... When you have camera in your hand, it's almost like there's an in-between between you and the action. Mm-hmm. And yeah, when you put the camera down, you're talking to the kid or wherever mm-hmm. you're at, you have that thing. But it's almost like when you're in there, it's everything sucks in. Mm-hmm. Like you're like, I, I need yeah. to get this for his, like, pos- mm-hmm. like I better not F up filming mm-hmm. this because mm-hmm. he's putting his life on the line. Mm-hmm. So there's almost like this heightened focus yeah mm-hmm. uh, as a cinematographer it, it brings the best out of you yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's mm-hmm. it's crazy yeah, yeah. i mean because you're years really... in the game i've seen so much stuff uh-huh. yeah. yeah that it's too hard to i mean i have to go through like fuel tv this is crazy stuff i've seen yeah. mm-hmm. video groove obviously that's what we're talking about yeah mm-hmm. carlos is definitely one well, i'm trying Car- charles charles and carlos i'm trying to think there's one other one that i could share that would i don't know maybe come back to it before i sign off yeah yeah. Yeah, you think about There's it. There's so many. Yeah. There's so many. There's so many. I'm trying to think of maybe a Chris Happy one that was pretty nuts in this section when I got nervous. He doesn't really install nervousness though when you're filming him. Mm-hmm. You're like, he, he's going to do this. He's going to do this. Yeah, yeah. All right. I think the Point Loma gap, the, um, the gap over the rail, the Chris Thomas rail. Um, Chris Thomas. I'm sorry, not Chris Thomas. Not Chris Thomas. Um, the famous skateboarder um, from Zero. Mm. His his rail. When I was down there filming with Ryan Northway, Eric Garcia, 
people taking attempts at that was pretty. I mean, his rail. What does that mean? Leap of faith. Yeah, leap of faith. Thank you. Leap of faith. Can't believe oh, 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 oh. Faith. you forgot. It's been so long since I've actually yeah, yeah. said the leap of faith. Leap yeah. of faith. Yeah, because yeah, people were whipping out and hitting their heads like. Chris Thomas rail. So that's not Chris Thomas. It's um. Jamie Thomas. Jamie Thomas. Thank you. Right. From zero. He's like one who made it famous. That's yeah, how you always yeah. say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was scary because people whipped out and hit their heads. Like yeah. Northway uh-huh. and Eric both had scary attempts over that. That's funny you mentioned that because me. Th- 17 went, during 17. Friday. Dude, that jump, man. There's people almost getting hit by cars is always the scariest. There? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. throughout the years of filming, like people. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's not cool. That's though. not cool. Yeah, that mm-hmm. stuff has happened. Oh, yeah, he would know. Like, that's yeah, not cool. You, I've seen video parts with you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys would know that more. I'm good at getting hit by cars. But you guys, yeah, you guys. I'm good at getting Yeah, <laughs> it happens yeah. quite often. Yeah, exactly. It's a habit. That's funny you mentioned Leap of Faith because on Friday night when like Vinny got in and like, Victor, we were all gathering around. For some reason, we were watching the Leap of Faith attempts. We were like, who did it? We were trying to think of who actually did it and we were watching like, the, it's like a montage of it on YouTube. Yeah. Is there a I've montage? That. Yeah, of yeah. Every Leap of Faith attempt and it's like Jason two Marshall, skateboarders Kel. and then the rest are just bladers yeah. and there's way more people than we thought and yep. I saw like Kel about to try it really? and I was like, yeah. I was like, I think Kel came like the closest Kel and Kel was like the it. worst. Yeah. Yeah, Kel was the worst. Yeah. <laughs> and as yeah. Vinny lost it. Vinny was like on the floor crying. <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, there was like, there was a lot, of, we thought it was like four or five people when we watched the video there was like almost ten people that tried it. Yeah, no, well, I can think of at least there, there, there's what uh, there's Kel, Eric, uh, Jason uh, Marshall, there's, Ian uh, Brown, Brian North, Garcia, Shima. Yep. Yeah. All of there's them. still more so, that I can't think about right now. People just jumping that thing like a freaking like a rock off a cliff. Yeah. Man, just like, Straight up, just dropping <laughs> off it. Just like a sack off of a freaking mountain, dude. Just... I think one of the crazy things we did for filming was the Solomon uh, Burning Bridges open. When we were lighting things on fire mm-hmm. and getting mm. chased by like fire departments, yeah, like I, one night we we lit Vinny's rail in Antioch and we went to go we went to film the Santa Rosa Bowls Nick Riggle light up and then we went into the Antioch and lit that one up in the same night and what? we got chased by cops in Antioch and and we're hiding in the trees in Santa Rosa and uh, you got from the chased fire by cops at both times yeah oh. we got away at both wow like. Oh, that video that intro was two tricks away from being like the sickest intro. What two tricks? Rob Thompson didn't do his light up, mm-hmm. and there's one other person that was going to close it out that didn't do theirs, and I, I did everybody else's. I'm like, you guys, I can't get out to you in time to go out to Alabama to go shoot this. Yeah, here's what you got to do. I sent him like what it looked like. I'm like, get it. Do this, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, dude, those Solomon. I'm just thinking ah. about those Solomon tours. They sent you everywhere, huh? You went to Japan. You went to Japan. You traveling those, yeah. in a limo. What Focus was, was this shit. What's the story with that? You guys were in limos. Traveling? Dude, Dublin in a double decker bus. Double decker so bus. Sunshine tour. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, you talked about that before. Bus, yeah. <sighs> what the heck? Double decker bus is where we have it for the day and just be like whoo, roaming around, popping in the bars, going to street spots. Whoa. It was just like the whole day long. It was like the hoax re- relived. <laughs> you know, there'd be like a DJ in the bus. What? Yeah. Bro, Rob, yeah. dude, yeah, yeah, Rob, yeah. 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 that sick. was like some EDM, yeah. like yeah. Uh, you're being technical. Okay, yeah, like British, like, <laughs> British, like <laughs> you know, I'm like ten years old. These kids, I'm like. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. part of it, you know, I'm like oh, bar, okay, cool, cool. yeah, yeah. You know? Then mm-hmm. we just amp goes film something. Mm-hmm. Wilfred's gap in that video where he does the tr- it, oh no, Aaron's Aaron's fast slide in the bowl in Scotland was pretty. Oh, that was an amazing God. moment. I don't remember that. I remember that was in focus the video. Yeah, focus? yeah, was that in focus? Yeah, it was focused. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was that? He his- like fast slides this transfer flat rail that guards the outside of this old school graffitied up concrete bowl. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, and, yeah, But the yeah, place yeah, yeah. is mob-packed yep. with rolled letters from Northern England and Scotland. Mm-hmm. And it just, like, we just got in country. And it was just, mm-hmm. I never forget the effect that the Aaron's trick had on that tour. Like, one trick put an exclamation. It was like, we're here. Yeah. Like, Aaron's like, I'm here. I'm going to dominate. Dude. And the, in Aaron's fi- Aaron's like own fashion. Yeah, Aaron. Yeah. yeah, just like he did it. Same impact this weekend. <laughs> it's the same thing. Like I watch him do it's that all the PG time. Part. Yeah. Aaron. Yes. Yeah. That would be killer. <laughs> that would have been Aaron's. Yeah. PG twenty four. It's happening. Twenty twenty four. Aaron, we would love to go do us. He'll still rip in twenty. Him right now, yeah, sure. like He's... what he's doing in his life, and go tell the story. Mm-hmm. Those are the kind of introspective pieces I'd like to do on top of mm, having the introspective. Should have grabbed Like tell his story. Yeah. Like should have grabbed him. All the storytelling. Tools that I've learned over the last 15, 20 years, like mm-hmm. that's the kind of thing I would right. like, want to bring, mm-hmm. like mini short films like we've been doing in our commercial work. Like, Always mm-hmm. a step ahead, Dave. Yeah, yeah. that's what Always I'm saying. Like, take ahead. what you're learning and apply it to, you know, that's the kind of stuff. That's cool. Yeah. I think I think that's a 
I tell John Julio this stuff all the time. Like, I wish building. I could do this, you know? Character building, because that's, that, that's the thing, like, I think that VG did good, the, the things that they did good in that older era in skating that we all looked up to, like, they were good at taking the person being, like, yeah. showing you, like, not just, like, the skating, but, like, getting to understand that person on multiple levels, like, yeah. and that's... They, yeah. you know, a bit of an art form there, yeah? Yeah, that's separate of, like, the cinematography idea I was telling you about, because that one's just about cinematography and the skating. Mm. Like, this, this would be, like, a totally different kind of piece, you know? It would be, like, talking about where Aaron's been since he was then to now. What's that story? And then let's get some great shit of him Yeah. now. I think it would be so killer. So, it was so good to see him. Yeah, off. Oh. To go hang out with him. Yeah, honor, oh, as always. <laughs> He's, yeah. It was so great that he showed up. Yeah. It was a great, great Blighting Cup, John Julio. Yeah. Shout out John Julio, man. John that, Julio. That guy tirelessly works. Yeah, that was incredible. Yes. I want to get to a few more questions because they're blowing up right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to some of these Many questions. people are asking this. I know you talked about this before in other places. It has to be mentioned, I guess, because uh -huh. people are coming here to see a Dave Payne uh, you know, interview. But people are asking about VG box sets and VG uploads oh, to, good, to YouTube yeah, no, and stuff a, like that. I don't never mind answering this. Oh, okay. I figure you're like... That's probably the most common question you get, and I know you've seen said that about uh, on other podcasts about that. Yeah, and there's been a, a couple of attempts, weak attempts to do it. Uh, weak attempts. <laughs> no, no, it's just it's a it's. And here's the thing: what's been stopping it? It's getting a hold of all the right masters because we, we're going to do it, mm -hmm. upload. Everyone's like, here's what I get all the time: Hey, man, they're already online. You can do it. I'm like, yeah, dude, those are ripped up YouTube like versions that yeah. other people uploaded from their things. Like mm -hmm. we want to upload the masters mm -hmm. and yeah, offer the it good up. quality. Yeah. Too. And I will literally would only want to offer it up for like the cheapest thing. So we could fund it to do something for that feature or yeah, something yeah, and yeah, just yeah. pay for the cost of things. Yeah, so exactly. minor. So people can have digital copies, yeah. sound mastered copies of the DG set, digital copy set, yeah. you know, where you can download the D thing or people want to do, um, we can do the masters in Blu-ray or something like that. Boom. And we, I, I would get like somebody like, Yvonne or one of the photographers that put together some kind of like best of VG photos, like try and put something together, go with mm -hmm. it, like as a part of that order. That's awesome. That, you know, but that's just time and a lot of time. Organized. So, mm -hmm. but I have uh, the back end of the masters and Sean Talman is totally willing to do it. So it's just a matter of getting the right resource where I can get them uploaded and get the right place to that'll do that from the beta masters and all that kind of stuff. So What's, it's not as easy as just doing it. Yeah. I, that's why I want to tell yeah. people like, be patient. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. I just, again, these are all like, I know we're talking a lot of what ifs tonight, mm -hmm. but that's what we're here for. Right. So, so you still t stay in touch with, uh, you still stay in touch with Sean Tomlin. Yeah. 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 Morgan. Morgan. Yes. I, I actually had bought Morgan's house when I moved to Costa Mesa in 2013. Uh, we rented it for a year and then we ended up buying it, uh, where, yeah, we lived and I still live. I don't have the house anymore, but that's a really cool story that like, they've always been a kind of a key benchmark parts of my life. Yeah. For what? Over 25 years now? Yeah, 25. 30. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Intense. The groove, the groove guys. That's awesome. The groove I guys. I mean, Sean gave me both my jobs out here in my careers. Yeah. I mean, fuel. Yeah. Fuel TV is huge. Yeah. <laughs> And then I came down to do commercial work uh, to get leave from the network to do commercial work, which is you know doing client uh, brand videos or commercials for different companies. And uh, I worked at a house that had the Boost Mobile Monster account. I got my chops doing that. And then two of my other friends started off to do our own company in 2015. And here wow. we are, four years later. Intense. Yeah. Then I moved back down to Costa Mesa. Got an office in downtown Santa Ana. Blading Cup is my backyard. The Blading last Cup's in the backyard. Since 2014. For That's me. Wait, you live in Santa Ana now? No, I got the campsite. Oh, the campsite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah there. Right. We've got editing facilities in Irvine, and I live in Costa Mesa New Park. Right. Okay. But yeah. I mean, I almost bought a condo before I moved up to LA, right where BK and those guys and Jess were buying their condos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. There's a lot of roots in downtown Santa Ana. Arlo, BK, Jess. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that, 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 all that, that, the that artist lofts down that there. That little yeah. block. Yeah, yeah, yeah like man. That that's all those guys. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They all started. Julio just kept it going. Hmm? Yeah. Just awesome. kept it going. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool. That, like, that's the home for rollerblading in the yeah. West Coast. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. It's a great little town for it. Mm-hmm. Let's get another question going. Go. Darren Wilkerson, what was your reaction when you saw Jordan Dale's fall on his face in BG22? Oh. My reaction was <laughs> this face right here, like concern. Yeah. Yeah, like that was bad. Was that one of the that's probably one of the worst falls yep. from VG. Yeah, but I didn't film it. Oh you didn't? Mm -mm. Who filmed that? I yeah. don't know. You don't I remember. remember who filmed it. Maybe James. I don't know. I was I was, I was sent in. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that was like a different reaction than, than actually being there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a yeah. Yeah. And that and something's got they, people don't know what I feel exactly. There's so many contributors and mm -hmm. yeah. 
Like I probably I don't know I don't know what the percentage of what the VGLs film, but I probably film about half of it, usually give or take an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. It's a lot. Well, yeah, you gotta like at your job. Mm -hmm. You got part of my half my job was to go shoot it. Yeah, but the other half is like trying to I guess uh, edit it and organize and direct. Organize, get everyone go together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the beginning, I would sell the own videos. I was on the phone like Mm -hmm. selling videos, and we did our own music rights for the first eight years. Like I would be calling. I got. Far side was we got rights from Capitol Records to use that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, this is they're like, oh, Rollbane's new. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, that's tough. They didn't know any better. I, I, I'm they didn't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it became a legend. It was great. Yeah, it was <laughs> they awesome. didn't know any better. So sick. yeah, that's the thing. I think a lot. No, that, that's another. Oh, sorry again. So no, no, you know, I just think the music too is another thing. Like has to the music has to be cleared and all that kind of stuff. I was mm-hmm. just about yeah. to say like. Um, I don't know who did the research for the music back in the day, but mm. first of all, a lot of that music was like the soundtrack to a lot of our like yeah, child, definitely. childhoods, definitely. like the stuff that, that came out of that. Yeah. And like you know, even you know, even when you just mentioned earlier, like pay my dues, like you know the yeah. the cipher song from the Corey Donahue song, yep. the rapper cipher, yeah. Like a lot of these, I was like, need to know who this song is. I, that's the only yeah, yeah. song I know from that guy. Uh-huh. I would have never. I've that's never exactly a lot of people. To that guy, a lot of right? people like, like that. Yeah. Ex- exactly. So like a lot of the, that music I've like discovered through through that, and I think yeah, like uh, good yeah, basically good job because it was really really tasteful. A lot of that music back then. Well, it was a good mix. Yeah, I, good people were around us at Groove. Obviously, my upbringing on the East Coast. And the time period that I grew up in, having a brother who's a musician, Mm -hmm. uh, going to see so many great shows, you know, having that, you know, of course, everyone had classic rock background. And Mm. but Rob, like, got me into jazz and ska and reggae and Mm -hmm. punk rock and and like all, you know, like I just had such an eclectic background and I was older. Like I was 20, was it 23 when I started directing Video Groove. And so I had brought 23 years of music experience already to the table and a mm-hmm. great brother influence in my music. And then Sean and Morgan had great music taste. So they, mm-hmm. they are all in the mix. And then, so I was, we were doing, all doing the music together in the beginning. Then we got a great music supervisor named Austin Brown, uh, who now does like marketing for huge brands right now, but still a close friend, but he was great too. He had such great, you got people who have wide diverse tastes, you know, mm-hmm. and no really good music in each genre. So that's what we tried to do. I'm sorry, Ariel. Could you? <laughs> Is that Mike? It's busy studio. I don't know, but just uh, can, 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 can I get him? We'll only let him in if it's like Come someone we know. The green room, <laughs> the green room is Ariel. a fun patio. Ariel, could you go out there and keep him out there for now? Just like 15, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> so <I can. laughs> yeah. Mike. What, what an ant! What a Mike. like! Oh my yeah, gosh! So, yeah, that's funny. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh my God, he's screaming oh, out I there. To come in. <laughs> Colin is blowing me up right now. Colin Kelso is blowing me up right now. What does he say? He said, "Ask Dave who was Stunt Frog in VG4." Stunt Frog. Yeah. He's doing VG. He's doing VG trivia with me right now. Damn him. You don't want a VG trivia with with Colin. Colin, I yeah. know. I know. Tell him I don't know. What do you mean, Stunt Frog? I don't know. That's what he texted me. He got me. But he's been. He's Colin one, Dave zero. Oh my God! How are you gonna stump stun Dave Payne? What's stun frog? I don't know. Is I'm trying to think too, because I just saw VG4 the other day. All right, Colin, give us the answer. <laughs> give us the answer. I wanted to see what. Uh, so this is also what Colin said. I'm, I'm going to read his thing from. You embarrass me. Why well, do you not want to? No, go ahead. Go there? It's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's from his heart, man. It's cool. Yeah. Saying Dave Payne was the most important skater of all time is an understatement. Dave didn't only have his finger on the pulse of street skating. He defined it. He's a major component in the culture that through his documentations brought people together, skating, and set a precedent. Music that lives on through a feeling and energy that seems incomprehensible to anything new coming out. He said this already. I guess he's like a little who, but... <laughs> uh, He was the eye, the ear, the heart. We are lucky to have Dave because we believe a community without him would have been lesser. Thank you, Dave, for dedicating (laughs) for a decade to contributions that will forever live in the hearts of those your videos, people you touched. Man, see, this is what I'm talking about. What a weekend of compliments for Dave, man. Like, (laughs) it feel it feels it's 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 hard sometimes to hear, man, because it's like like wow, it's too much. Take enough. Too much. You know? Yeah, yeah. But it's like I also like it means so much yeah, to me. Totally. Like, thank it's you, like Colin, my, so much, yeah. and uh, I, I love you. No, it's totally like yeah. It's, yeah. I, I I also have that issue too. Like, uh, I don't know if this is your issue, but I mean, like, just receiving yeah too much. It's yeah. Like, 
it's cool. Like, I, I trust me, I'm just like every human being. Like, right. Validation's nice no, every now like, and then. Yeah, it's it's just like that balance but of like yeah, when it's so many kids, you know, yeah. you're like overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. I remember taking uh, one of my dads in the neighborhood a couple years ago to one of the premieres at Skate Blending Cup two years ago. My, my really good friend Brian, mm. totally disconnected from from this, and he goes down there. And he, he's down there with me for like an hour, and he sees the interaction with mm. what our normal world, mm. right? He's like, dude. He tells the story to all the other dads we play poker with. He's like, you should see Dave when he goes down this thing. It's like it's some dude I never even met before. These kids come up to him and they're just like, blah 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 blah, pouring their heart out to him. Mm. I'm like, yeah, sorry, I should have warned you. Because <laughs> he looks at so me. So I'm kind of a celebrity. Next thing you know, he's like, I'm gonna go get something to eat. I'll let you talk. But I mm. was like, sorry, man, sorry. But yeah, but it's 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 humbling. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, nice to know. Yeah. Eric Garcia is coming in here. Sun, Sun Frog yes, was the dude who yes, jumps yes, over, yes. I think, the trash can wearing the frog mask and falls. What did he say? Sorry. Oh, say, oh yeah, repeat it again. Yeah. Stunt Frog was the dude who jumps over like a trash can wearing a frog mask and falls. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. I remember pulling that footage. Some of those footage, it's, Eric's a good call. It's, it's some of the stuff we had uh, contributors coming from like all around the world. And sometimes I would like sift through everything that came in. And this particular clip, now that I'm being refreshed, because that's all I need is a little refresher. Mm -hmm. And that's the brain that's focuses that's right back in. <laughs> and I remember pulling that from, could be like a Tom Fry tape. From like one of his tours or like some kid random footage, like I might not even pull a clip, mm -hmm. out, but I'll be like, see something like, oh, I might need that for something in this, mm -hmm. you know, an mm -hmm. intro to stunts or something. Right, right. Yeah. So, oh, stunts. Random. Private. That was so sick. Memory on a rope. ESG VG6. <laughs> Dude, Manuel Billers. Manuel Billers is playing train jump. Probably one of the craziest things in, ever in a VG. Oh, no, so that's jump. a good one. Yeah. That's up he there. He broke his back. That was a good one. Changed his life forever. What VG was that in? That was four, wasn't it? He was it? Five? Back? Yeah, it's in the stunt section. Four. I think it was maybe four. Yeah. yeah. It's like the end. I think it's at the end of the stunt section. I don't remember it's that. It's like high eight footage. <laughs> like the train is, it's while the train is going. So when he jumps out, he's like, mm, he's traveling as fast as Oh, that. yeah. What was that? What, off the bridge? Yeah. Off oh, the bridge so in Australia. I, where, like in the video, you can't really see Tom what that was doing. Think. So what is right. he? He jumps out of a train straight off the train, bridge. Moving train off the bridge while it's moving. Think about that. Think about that. It was the insane. What doing 30, 40, 50 miles an hour? It was 30, insane. At least you can't be doing and like, a, like a 30, 40 foot drop. Of water to clear, but you have to like jump Time out. Time it. Yeah, and say you jump out weird. Once you jump out and you're in the air, like your body's gonna do what it's gonna do, uh -huh. especially going 30 miles an hour and traveling distance. Uh -huh. And then oh, that drop was probably. He broke his back. Oh, I didn't know he yeah. broke his back doing that. Yeah. How did he yeah. get out of the water? Like, well, he broke it. So he didn't get paralyzed or anything like that. Yeah, so, so he, he like, changed. You know, he gave him back problems. Oh for my long god, time. that was one of the dumbest things I mean, ever. To, on to video. Daniel's credit, he so came back and skated, and you know, he was young well, enough. That's, you know, that's good. But, yeah, he I would probably do some shit like that or something like that. Yeah, it was insane because in the footage, insane. Like you see him clearly jump out, but you I'm like, Can't was he like on? Was, like he, was he on the roof? Did he jump out the door? Like what? I the think hell? it was the door. I'm pretty sure because either the door or the roof. But yeah, I mean, either way, that's that's a signature. Yeah, moment. that's intense. Yeah. Um, Memory Camp wants to know if you have a good Brian Bell story. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I got that's a, a good one. Bell story. R.I.P. to the God. Brian Bell, <laughs> and the, probably there's there's people that you go film with for the first day, and there's mm -hmm. magic that happens. Like yeah. Brian Bell's first day was like set the bar for all first days the first days mm -hmm. i remember skating a pvc setup probably like six seven pvcs they had set up like down in Trula Vista. Mm -hmm. his house was like the house everyone went to to go mm -hmm. skate larry corey all of his friends yeah. there's probably like eight of them you know i'm in i'm in like i'm in like as latina community as you can be in yeah and they treated me like one of them People that lived in the hood, right? Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. More hood, the better. Yeah. Like, I want to be, as long as I'm with them and I'm with my friends and they take care of mm -hmm. me, we're good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you still have to be alert. You still got to be, totally. like, can't be, an, totally. be a jerk. Totally. You know, just totally. be respectful. Yeah. So, we start there, PVC, an hour. And I'm like, are we going to go skate? Like, are we going to go, like, I'm having fun because I'm skating, too. I'm not really filming any PVC stuff. But, uh, yeah, and it was just, like, eight to ten spots later. And Brian closed it with doing, like, um, he did, like, Gaps and handrails were like the last five spots. Like it was like measured, like he went and did. He started with like the PVC, went to curbs, then went to switch ups on those curbs, then went to traveling and switching up to ledges to ledges. And then we went to the classic handrails and he was doing everything. Like it was like a, it was like a demo mm -hmm. all day. Then we went to like steeper handrails and then we went to gaps with handrails and we went to transfers. Then we went to like drop off transfers to close out the day. Mm -hmm. And I remember being like, wow. And this kid was like, he had tons of other, his own footage. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm doing my own thing. But totally was like, he had that VG, like, I get it. I know, like, I, I did. Sean and Brian and uh, Tomlin had a relationship already. So 
Brian had so much reverence for video groove and groove and just the, yeah. the art. So he was amazing. That's incredible. But yeah, Brian's like will always be a special place in my heart. Um, and totally. rest in peace, Brian. I got, I'm fortunate enough that he came to see me. That's DJ the in first San Diego. person you filmed. Yeah, that's the like first something. person I filmed. Like I wow. tell a story all the time. He, he came to see me uh, DJ. I DJ in San Diego like four times a year at a place called the Air Conditioned Lounge in North Park. And Brian got to see. Me. I got to see Brian six months before he passed. Wow. And I remember being at a like a NIST get together that Mark Billick had at B Core and seeing Brian Smith. It was the when he got he was reported lost, and I remember being amongst my friends who really knew Brian Brian Smith very very much knew Brian very well. I remember Brian Brian, Brian Bowen Smith Brian Bowen Smith knows, yeah uh, Brian, Brian Bell. B Bell very wow. well. Obviously they did a ton of videos together and they were good friends just yeah. like we were. So me and Brian have I were obviously became very close friends over the years and I remember pulling him aside and him and I like having a heart to heart about it and like wondering what we both thought had happened and we're, we're so worried and sharing trying to share stories and talk to each other about it but i went to brian's funeral i'm sorry it was it was again i was fortunate enough that he came to my dj night he has a, my, my last memory of him was very happy mm. he was in a great mood he like came to the dj booth blah 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 but when he passed i never the, the was the biggest, biggest funerals i've ever been to because brian no one understands about brian like he was big in our world but he went and did and b-boying and breakdancing and graffiti he did his own video magazine he was like mm. Dave Payne of like hip hop mm. like he did all this amazing underground work and totally. videography icons yeah yeah he did music video work all kind of stuff and his own video magazine and break videos and graffiti work mm. and storytelling and his that videos work. were so sick yeah so you can so imagine yeah. like just fights his and friends he had and, and like both those cultures you can imagine skating. what that funeral so was sick. like like Everybody from b boying hip hop, so yeah, friends. so many different like worlds San Diego together. Friendships. Yeah, like, it was like this crazy, wow, ton of people. Crazy, I was, I was like, that makes you feel better about one of your friends, you know? It was huge. It was dude, the parking lot was full into another parking lot. It was massive. Whoa, Damn. It was massive. And I remember being able to talk to Larry and Corey, and of course Angie was there, and um, it was like, it was amazing because I think we really too? got to share. I really got to find out yeah. more about what happened and about Brian, and just kind of like more of what I really needed to hear. Mm -hmm. Like the real truth. You know, Damn. just about things in life. And I'm, no, that's, that's personal. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, we all love Brian. So it's, yeah. but it was like, I needed to hear that. I needed to be with his closest friends and talk to them. Totally. And they, thank gosh, you know, they were there. Yeah. I got to talk to them. So that, that gave me peace and peace. I need, cause I don't know, I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I need to know. I want to know. It, help, it makes me feel better or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's weird. And they're your friends, you know? It's real. Yeah. It's good to hear that that many people were at his, Feel, yeah, you know, like that he was that like loved and appreciated of a person. Oh, he yeah, was a god to us in, in exactly. Uh, I used to look up like, uh, yeah, God, this guy, man. I think Billy. he was one of the best when he started. <laughs> I remember Buck too. Billy is, is set, his alt character, Billy Bell. Uh, Billy Bell, man, mad as hell. Oh, Billy Bell, <laughs> mad, mad as hell. hell. Oh man, what a character. Ah, oh, Billy, I'm Billy. <laughs> Jared Cahill asks, why was Texas not featured in ECVG? Oh, wait, why was Texas featured in ECVG but not actual, not actual East Coast cities like Boston? <laughs> <laughs> That's why there was Battle My Crew, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. No, hey, like, everyone's going to have, like, their, their, their things that they didn't see yeah. in VG, and I'll just say, sorry. Like, yeah, like, again, I think we kind of talked about it earlier. It's like, there's regrets and there's things you wish you could have done, done differently and done better, you know? So those are things. Yeah. I, I'm like, oh, you're right. Damn it. I wish I did. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have done that better. or covered that scene better. Mm. Yeah. But that's why, again, that's another reason that battle. My crew was a part of that. Like, listen, like I can't be everywhere and do everything. Help me. Yeah, help me. Yeah. Fine, tell me. Show me. Yeah, yeah. Show me where Educate the scenes me. are. Yeah, yeah, tell totally. me where you're at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was before the internet. It was before cell phones and skate spots oh, and yeah. apps. And like, oh, this yeah. was our way. You talked about Gorilla. it. Our yeah. way of talking and communicating. We spoke through yeah. videos. Mm -hmm. We spoke through magazines. We spoke through, uh, you know, just the connections of, of spots and who's, 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 where's the crew in that, in mm -hmm. that area. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I just tried to it, bring that to life. That's righteous. There you go. Let that be their own scribe. Let's get let's get one or two more questions. Yeah, we're at in, the two hour and mark, then, and then we're gonna let we're gonna let Dave go. Um, first of all, <laughs> shout out to first of all, it's been an honor, and oh, it's yeah, been an educational you. experience, and it's been easy. Thank you guys. And even just on this one, I'm feeling like we gotta have you on again. Oh, yeah, <laughs> on part two. Someone, okay. Someone because commented that this could go on for hours and not get yeah, old. Yeah, because you have so much. This could be <laughs> that, that's thanks, guys. Yeah. I would love anytime. Yeah, anytime. awesome. Anytime. Radical. Shout out Lord Brian with a super chat 1999. It says, love you guys. This episode is everything. I'm going to listen to Little Brother today in honor of 
Is that Brian? Yeah. yeah. Brian and I were talking about Little Brother today. Little mm-hmm. Brother? Yes. The, the rap group from uh, like North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Dude's like um, one of the greatest. Uh, Dillo is like one of the original producers for them. Mm-hmm. And like, we just, if you really know your hip hop, like, Little Brother is like famous. Yeah, you've been in there forever. You and your brother, man. Yes. Like, and yes. Well, like, you, well like, I think we all like. No, I mean, I grew up on a bunch of stuff, yeah. But you're like. Uh, I grew up listening to hip hop, but I mean, like you, like you, you been in, like a hand in it. Yes, for a bit yes. DJ. It's nice like, to be DJ. Yeah, yeah cause like, it's like involved, that's part of like what I love because it too. keeps you having to know and having to keep learning the new yes. bands and groups and who's yes, out there. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's not hard for me to work yeah. on listening to that stuff, but yeah. And I'll, Brian's older, so like I we just kind of met for the first time this weekend, and look mm-hmm. at that. Like, there's people that I've never met before that I'm like forming new friendships with. Yeah, that have had a life. So, like we're connected through VG, but. Instantaneously, we have stuff to talk about. It's insane. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. A little capsule on that one right there. Yeah, Brian. <laughs> yeah, Brian. Also, shout out to Jaron Cahill with the 999 Super Chat. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you guys so much. Um, Do we got any bro. one or two more questions? Um, I say, can we just talk about the merch a little bit more? Like, just let people know, like, where to get it and stuff. Sure. W- what's available. Because like, you just dropped this, this gem. Exactly. L- yeah. Austin has the VG Halen. Shirt on, which will be a tattoo on my leg one day soon. <laughs> which oh, will be yeah. tattooed Shout out to on Chuck my and leg Steve. One. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Steve Johns again at shred the thre- uh, shred the thread dot com. And also, just you can also hit us up on the VG IG, uh, which is you, know, you can DM us if you want. Video Groove Magazine. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh yeah it's Video Groove Mag. Video Groove Mag. Yep. I am or VG. It's the IG. It's where we IG. put up our stuff. So if you want to DM mm-hmm. us and ask us any questions, go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There we go. Sick, nice. Yeah, so yeah, hopefully we'll get some projects going. Awesome. Again, it was just I think I got again give inspiration again to John Julio. Like he like got me involved in filming his forty section two years ago. Yeah. Uh and moving back in the area five years ago has been a key thing for me Mm -hmm. to be close. And I've never felt closer like since because it's hard. Like I was up in LA. I luckily had the YMCA, I had, like Tracy White and Carlos Kessel and those guys. They were mm-hmm. local. That's where I wouldn't mm-hmm. go hang out and go skate. And they'd have a little contest down there. Of course, the IMYTs when they were around, but I was doing my fuel job. I was traveling around the world. It was hard to stay connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, but moving back down here, it's easy. It's easy. Like, and even bringing back friends and reconnecting them back into the scene too. Like Charlie Ashby last night, my friend Chris Garrett oh, from Fiction. Like, yeah, like. Getting their butts wow, down Chris the Blading Garrett. Cup. Yeah, Chris has been Blading Cup. That's probably the first one he's Dang. missed this year. I he's starting really. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Garrett showing a, yeah. starting a brewery. Oh, in oh. Long Beach. Fiction yeah. Brewery. 2020. So I want to shout out all <laughs> out there. Yeah, but it's going to be a good time. It's called Trusted Gut. So I'm going to put that out there. All right. Yeah. Chris, I want to be living in Long Beach. You're a former skater. Uh, I'm a skater. It'll be our new hangout. Uh, It'll be our new hangout. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. I will we'll connect you guys. Yeah. We'll awesome. Long Beach official. Radical. I'll be here in Long Beach a ton. That's why I was like getting hyped when you're like, are you moving back? Yeah. yeah. We'll be here a ton we're doing we, all, we we're doing all the media for it. My, my company. That's awesome. Yeah. So we're here all the time. There's all this, Long Beach is great. Oh, we'll get one of those 59 seconds going. Dude, this uh, is the payback. There you go. Yeah, payback. <laughs> That's yeah. it. We're doing Austin's this week while he's here. Okay. And then you, when you move back, it's on. I love it. Yeah. I finally get awesome. a, a VG section. Yeah. <laughs> 59 seconds is perfect. Like, it's like... I'm not good enough for anything more than 59 this, seconds yeah, anyway. We're not going to film it in 59. Like, we're going no, like, to yeah. work on it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. No Definitely. shorts. Well, Dave, thank you so much yeah. for coming on. Thank you, too. I've been looking forward to this for so long. And I'm sure a lot of other people were, too. Dave, it's been an absolute honor to it's have It's an honor for me to be on the new shit (laughs) (laughs) new and old right here Dave you're the man thanks Jump Street yep I'm so happy to be here peace everybody else thanks for tuning in peace